Yeah, tell John not to drive fast. It's like gross out. Not like we can get started. Or talk while driving. Right. <laughs> Yeah, tell John not to drive fast. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you're ready, I can start the recording. Yeah, tell John not to drive fast. Yeah. So if you're ready, I can start the recording. Uh, you want to start, Julie? Yeah, hold on. My screen's being oh, weird. Oh. Hold on. Give me a second. It's um, flashing on you. It's flashing at you. Yeah. Um, hold on. Oh, I think John is here. Okay. Um, do you want me to? Oh, there he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, John. John, can you hear us? You're on mute, John. Sorry about that. I saw the reminder saying eight and I texted her earlier and I was driving home and she said, oh, we have a quorum. Did I say eight in the reminder too? No, right? No, the reminder from Tom, the, the Zoom reminder. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know eight. So I, I, I apologize. I thought it was eight and got sidetracked. Have you guys okay. started and read the thing and all that yet? Or? We were just about to do that. Great, so I get to thank you for saving that. Yeah. All right, so we're on YouTube you'd be now. disappointed. <laughs> All right. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Economic Development Committee will be conducted by a remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific, specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of South Road's website at www.southrotown.com. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch or participate in the meeting may do so in the following manners by finding the meeting at www.southrotown.com backslash remote meetings. No in-person attendance uh, members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceeding in real time by technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite the best efforts, we will post on South Rose website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. All right, so I'm gonna call, we have a quorum, so I'm gonna call the Economic Development committee meeting on Thursday, October 29th to order at 7.12 p.m. And again, I apologize for being late. I uh, really thought it was at eight and I was really early. Life was good. Um, downtown Village District, I guess, uh, Julie, if you don't mind, I will let you and Claire start off on this one because uh, last we talked, you guys were gonna be at our last meeting. Um, we had talked about how to send our comments in and you guys were gonna send us, uh, you guys were gonna have a conversation and talk about uh, a new way for us to send our comments and stuff. So I don't know if anything else has come from there or, or that. So I will let you guys take it away and please sure. start. Thanks, Thank you. John. So yeah, I think we just wanted to dive in a little bit um, and kind of talk about some of the changes that were made and what our thoughts were and you know collectively what our, um, you know, what our general feedback would be, um, but also obviously, you know, people should feel free and should be encouraged to submit things individually. Um, um, Judy had given us a matrix to use, um, but Claire had also talked about, you know, maybe there'd be, maybe it'd be more helpful to have something that, you know, had a little bit more detail in it. So um, I'm open to either, we can, we can share both. Um, and um, you know, just to get Judy our comments. So, um, Claire, do you have, you know, looking through it, there were a couple little typos, nothing hugely major, um, but I think maybe just you know, um, looking at some of the changes that were made, specifically some of the the numbers and things that have changed, what we think might be some points of contention um, that we should talk about amongst ourselves first. Um, and get ready for the meeting with 
with Judy in, in the joint session that we are tentatively, I think, would like to try to schedule for um, November 10th. But um, I know we're, um, so we're going to try to coordinate that... to make sure everyone was available for that. I think the selectmen will reach. I, I had heard from, from Chelsea today on, on another matter. And um, I think that the 10th is going to be a, a good day that okay. they're planning on having that with a, for a joint meeting. All right. Does that work for most of you here? I'll make it work. And I, I think they're inviting other committees as well and trying oh, to get yeah, some absolutely. stakeholders and things. So, um, yeah. We it, is to this the, um, I, I just. Um, I just kind of temporarily lost my connection. Is, is this the um, tentative November 10th meeting that you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like it's slightly so, more than tentative. Um, Maybe, I, I, I could be mm -hmm. over speaking. I, I heard, I heard that. Sam weigh in on that more. Um, yeah. So, Claire talked about some, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to start talking about the document it, yet, but um, we got, it is the 10th. Lisa just sent a, okay, it, it is, is the 10th. Okay, it is so, definitely okay. the 10th. Do, do, do we know what time, Lisa, so if you're listening? One of the things. Claire, I think we lost you. It's, it says 6.30. Oh, perfect. Lisa just at 6.30. Perfect. I can make that work. Okay, so, Thanks, Lisa. Um, one of the things that um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody um, realized about, I believe that the email that went out from Mark Purple went out to the committee head. So that would be the one, and, and Julie received Bless. it. Bless. Um, they want... I just want to make sure that everybody understands they want the Judy's uh, table there with all of her comments. They want that return to Mark November 6th. Did everybody see that? Yes. Oh, okay, good. All right. <clears throat> um, did a fabulous uh, go through of redlining the document. You did do um, a redlining? Adding in there or showing where the um, changes were. That, uh, Claire, you're coming in all broken up on my end. I don't know if anybody else yeah. can, can hear you. Okay. I heard you know, a redline document. I think no. I'm going. No. Yeah, I think I, I have I have crappy wireless service from um, on these Zoom calls. So I'm going to switch to my phone. I'll be back in a minute and see if that works better. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Did she yeah, say that clicking. what I heard was that she somebody did a fabulous job of a red line document, which is awesome because I don't know if anybody was around or participated in any of the meetings on Zach, but one of the reasons that I think that that failed um, was that there was no red line document to see what was changed from the original document. And there was a lot of, that was a big document. So my personal opinion, we really, really need to educate people on, and they need to know what the changes are. A red line document will really help our cause, in my opinion. Yeah, That's uh, my well, only Marika comment did, on this. That was Marika's handiwork, and she did a really great job of, of integrating, you know, what the what what Judy's um, version is versus the um, what the existing bylaw was. And I think unlike the Zach, the Zach, it, and I was not, um, that was before my time, but my understanding with the Zach that the redlining, even if you tried to do it, really didn't help because it was just different formatting. It was so different right. that a red line wasn't helpful and people just got frustrated and, and, and you know, we were really worried about what was actually in it. Um, you know, this is, is not the case. There's definitely some pieces added. There's definitely pieces taken away, but it, a true red line actually works and you can see what was added and deleted. And, um, so, you know, so yeah, Marika had, had done that and I would, um, Can we send that to us? To Marika, is that committee? something you could, I don't know, could you share that screen? Is that possible? Uh, or is that too much? Is that uh, too yeah, complicated? I'll have to find the document. I could, um, I'm just thinking. If oh, come on. I just drove all the way home and you don't have the document. Come on. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> holed up in my, uh, in my guest room. Uh, but anyway, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find it. Um, 
Yeah, give me a minute. You guys continue. Yeah, no talking. problem. Even and if, even if you just send it to me by email eventually, I just like to see it. Yeah. Yeah, no, Thank I think it would that. be helpful for our discussion purpose. I mean, I hope everyone's had a chance to review the document, but just to be able to see, okay, this is something that's new um, versus this is something that was already existing. Um, and I think most of the changes um, were specifically to, to what is versus what isn't allowed. And, and, you know, one of the things that we've been saying for quite some time now is that a lot of the, you know, what they, there is a mixed use provision in the bylaw, but it's very antiquated. And a lot of the things in it were like, printing press and night watchmen and things that, you know, just aren't part of our, you know, of our language and our experience um, in 2020. So, um, you know, and it doesn't include residential. So that was one of the main things, but we also added, you know, some other, um, some other pieces as well, um, particularly to attract things that are, you know, things that we thought are important, like restaurants and maybe a microbrewery or bed and breakfast. Uh, things like that. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think if we could see the red line, that'd be helpful. You know, who, who made the red, who redlined it? Any idea? Um, Marika did. Marika. Thank you, Marika. Sorry, Sorry yeah. I missed that. No, I'm not sure that she circulated it to the whole group yet, um, but she, I know she did it, you know, in her own due diligence and was kind enough to share it with me and Claire. Um, so I, I think um, one of the, one of the, points that um, I had actually reached out to Judy to ask her about was um, the, the floor area ratio. And some of you, you know, Michael, Rob, and Suzanne, you might have been more, more um, attuned to what that actually meant than I was, but, um, but I asked Judy about it because it wasn't something I was familiar with. And, and as we have it now, it says a maximum floor area ratio of 0.35. And that just means that if um, a, if a parcel is ten thousand, if I'm explaining this wrong, someone else can jump in. But if a parcel is ten thousand square feet, then the footprint can't be larger than um, thirty five hundred square feet. Um, hey, uh, Julie, is it the footprint or the total floor area of the building? Okay, maybe it's, it's the, maybe it's the floor I think area. It's, I so think it's the that, total floor area. Yeah. So if that were a two story building, then that'd actually be a pretty small footprint, right? So that'd only be like seventeen hundred square feet. So, yes. yeah, so after the fact, you know, Judy said this is something that 3,500 is not abnormal. It's sort of like the, you know, for a, um, for a, a, a suburban town, that's 0.35 is not want yeah. to be that abnormal. That, that was one of the things that I was going to ask about. Um, I thought that that number was a, a little bit low, especially if you want to push density and uh, allow a developer a little bit more flexibility to put stuff on there. Um, and I was just wondering if a, a change to even just uh, 0.4 um, mm -hmm. might not, um, that that could allow a little bit more development, a little bit more flexibility. Um, I, I just thought 0.35 was a little bit low. Yeah, and, and, and she even, um, and, you know, and it, it was interesting because after Judy sent the document, we had a, I asked, I asked her about that and she said, you know, that might be a little bit low. We might want to think about something a little higher and, or at least have something in there that allows, um, you know, a, a variance or a special permit to be had to, to increase that um, at, at a minimum, because that's, you know, where that, that yeah, that might be low. What um, section is that on? I'm sorry. That's in on the second page. Um, it comes up a couple of times. Um, uh, section D. Yeah. Um, section part four. Article I guess three, no one can see my screen share, right? No. Yes. Yes. I see your email. Yeah. I see. Yes, your email. My email. Yeah. And do you see this? The attachment. The document. Yeah. No. No. I don't see the document. I just see your email. Uh, a different sorry. screen. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. <sighs> On the floor area ratio, though, I also think that we're gonna bump into some conflict here with our setbacks and you know the minimum sizes of the lots. So some, something's gonna be something's gonna stop you know a building from getting either too big or um, or anything that somebody might can be concerned with. Um, again, I, I don't know that we'd ever even. Well, I don't know. I don't know that we hit that 0.35, but I agree. You want to you want to raise it to encourage, and that's what we want to do, right? We want to keep encouraging. So, um, but but some of these sites might just 
tap out before they get that high, you know? So yep. it's yep. balance of all these numbers, I think. Ah, perfect. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yep. Thank okay. you. Perfect. That's awesome. Perfect. Sorry, guys. Um, those look like your notes, but if you... These are my comments and then... Okay, yeah, that's right. Uh, because I guess uh, Julie started, I mean, there's different sections that she um, wanted to add stuff or change some things. Uh, but I guess the main um, bylaw would be 841. Um, yeah. And it will be an added new district. Um, so whatever is in red is what Judy um, added. And whatever I crossed out is what she uh. removed. Yeah, so and like we said, a lot of this is updating. So, um, and actually, I think that mobile home travel trailer, I think that's actually, isn't that actually moved to a lower section? It appears somewhere else, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's not actually, but the, this is just permitted uses. Um, so this is like, you know, I guess this is like a by right use. Yeah, the, the mobile home moved down to section E where it's a special permit by zoning right. appeals. So, so. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but that was that was already in there too. So she just removed it here. So. Gotcha, gotcha. So it didn't move. It just it was there already. Gotcha. Which I mean, I think that makes sense. Um, you know, of all the things that are not allowed, um, I'm okay with having to get a special permit for a mobile home or tra travel trailer downtown. Um, so yeah. So then we look at. Um, permitted uses up to the floor area ratio of 0.35. So we've talked about that a little bit. And, you know, I, I, I'm in agreement with, with Rob, I think at least a 0.4, maybe a 0.4 with a special, you know, with an option for a variance. Um, and, and, and Mike's right, like with the setbacks and the height, it like, it might be that every project that we see doesn't even reach 0.3. But as long as we want to be open to the possibility, raising that number, just even, you know, 0.05 to 0.4, it says something to developers coming in that uh, they have the flexibility. The, the other question I had with permitted uses, um, is this by right or is it like, how is the process different than how it is currently? because that was also part of when we were doing the overlay and when we were had, having discussions with Adam Costa, uh, we were trying to make the process uh, easier. So that's why we needed the, the performance standards to make sure that uh, we get what we want. But if the developer meets all those standards, um, they should be able to do it by right. because that's not clear here. I think there's, well, just my observation, there's very little in the permitted uses, mixed use development being one of them. And, and then we get, we get several sections, right? Permitted uses up to 3000 square feet, which again, is that, is that gonna be more than a floor area ratio of 0.4? Or are we conflicting with ourselves? Um, and then permitted uses, we've got permitted uses by a special permit of planning board. We have uses by a special permit from the zoning board of appeals. So we, we break it down, but as far as by right, the permitted uses, I think there's very little. Yeah, and I'm not even sure if this is actually by right, if it still requires, a per, you know, even though it's permitted, is this by right? Well, we're, we're, we're saying that if you follow these rules of the downtown village business district, I would think that we're saying that you've got to prove that you fall into one of these categories. And you don't need a special permit. You don't need a special permit until you're doing something else that's down below where it says, you know, special permit by planning board. I, I mean, I think that's how I'm taking it, Rob, do you think? I'm reading into that correctly here. I mean, yeah, but if if it's you know that's something that's easy to clarify too. If if it's if some people are unclear about it, then we should clarify it. So that's fine too. I, right. I don't and, know if that's 
I don't know if that's normally how it reads in a zoning bylaw right. or not. Um, and, if, but, and if we can't get a grasp on it, then we're not going to be able to educate others on it. So let me ask real quick, are we going to talk about these? Like right now, we've, it seems to me like we've already discussed increasing it from 0.35 to 0.4. Um, and everybody seems in agreement on that on our committee. Do we want to, you know, just keep track of all these changes and maybe take a vote on these changes and send our changes in as a committee? And then and as well as any individual ones we find later on? Is that kind of how we want to do this? Or do we want to, if we just talk about this and everybody sends in their individual changes on the, that we want changed on the matrix. I think we should send it in as a committee personally. I think that makes sense, John. I think it, you know, makes sense for us to have, especially on some of these issues like that, to have a position as, as a committee, um, you know, when we go into the joint meeting, I think that makes sense if others do too. I also think everybody else is just going to throw comments at, at Judy. So however we can streamline it for her. Yeah, I think if we just send in one for the committee to talk about tonight, and then I'm not, I, I'm not prohibiting anybody from making any other comments or changes to Judy or to, that they think. I just think if we can have one from, like get pretty much all on, on the same page through this tonight and then send that and I think would be helpful. And again, I, I'm not stopping from anybody from sending in their own matrix as well. So, all right, so, so far what I have is uh, we're changing that, everybody's in agreement to changing that to 0.4? Yeah. Okay, now we'll take up, I'll just keep an eye on these changes and then we'll vote on them all later. So right, thank you, sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, maybe I can just, I, I had some other comments that I added in here. Um, initially in the, in, the, in the early part, um, Judy recommended adding some definitions um, so one was uh, bed and breakfast signed, um, and one was, uh, now I have to just let me scroll up because I forget now. Uh, she defined um, microbrewery. One second. Um, so I think we should then call this microbrewery because otherwise it doesn't really make sense. So I was, that was my question. Um, like, why is this different from the definition? Uh, why are we not defining, for instance, co-work center? Um, we had done that in our initial VMUD. Um, I mean, if we don't have to, that's fine. But when do we define things and when don't we define things? So I think we should just keep it um, consistent. Yeah, I, I think you're right about maybe defining the co-work center. I think like, you know, it's, it's obviously it's a little bit subjective, but I think we want to define things that aren't automatically obvious as to what they are. Um, and I think maybe a co-work center, especially if we want to have some limits on any kind of, you know, size or density or I don't know, um, or what that means. I don't know. I'm, I don't think that's, I think if we're gonna, I, I think if we're gonna, if, if microbrewery is that has a need for a definition, I think maybe co-work center does too. So, or maybe neither of them do, I don't know. I agree. I feel like they sort of fall in the same category. Yeah, but as long as as long as um, you know she uses the same terms, you know, because there's no point um, defining microbrewery and then not using that term in the rest of the bio. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. So that was just a, a small thing. Um, then my next thing was so so these things I guess they you know she took them out and under C permitted uses, um, it says up to a maximum of three thousand. Uh, square feet. Oh yeah, and I wanted to know if this is by right or not, but I guess it is. Um, but maybe we can clarify that with her. Um, well, and how is, how does that negate section B that's permitted uses up to a floor area ratio of 0.35 or how do those do cross or make sense with each other? You know, can you get a can we get a 4,000 square foot building with a 0.35 FAR? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. If, I just don't know if this is. 
Yeah, is this normal to use floor area ratio in one area and then here you go to uh, square feet for establishment? Right. I don't know. Is that? <laughs> yeah, because they usually go together. Well, you're gonna you're gonna top like out on and, one, like an and or. You're gonna you're gonna hit one before you hit the other, I think. You know, so why don't why don't why isn't it all just in one group? It says. Wouldn't it be uses. up to a maximum of three thousand square feet? Or point four. Show. Yeah. You know, and maybe we say whichever is higher. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the proper way of writing it, but I I yeah. generally see it. But I, just, I feel like separating them. I don't, I don't know. That's it. Feels weird. Yeah. the the one The one issue that I see is that um, uh, going up um, mixed use development isn't a you know, uh, and, and the professional service or business park isn't a specific entity. A craft brewery is a specific entity. A bed and breakfast, an art gallery is an establishment. A mixed use development can have an art gallery, a brewery, and an office in it. And I don't know how those two things work together. It, so maybe it's, yeah, maybe it needs to be, you know, or something about, or any combination of, you know, thereof for mixed use development. And I, so yeah, because the way she defines mixed use development, it, residential plus non-residential, non-residential use occupying the ground floor, um, residential use above on upper floors. Um, so yeah, I think I think you're right. It needs you're right. It's not really comparing apples to apples. It's um, so almost needs to say or you know, or any combination thereof in a mixed use development. Yeah. Mixed use development being one or more of those things with residential. Right. Or, or defining what mixed use development is, wherever we define our words, and, and mixed we use put, yeah, I, mixed use development is defined up front at the beginning, but um, yeah, I think yeah. And, and this is a, this is just a minor question, but did, right. why are we ex was it a a reason to exclude medical or dental office use? I think that was put in later too. Yeah, it's it's mentioned. Uh, let's see. Um, where is it? Somewhere here, medical. Okay. I guess they need they need a. You can't have that um, by right. You need a special permit um, for those uses. Okay. I'm surprised that. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind making that up by. I mean, in some senses, we're trying to encourage things that aren't more officey. Like, right? We're trying to encourage the things that we see more as amenities, like, you know, art galleries and restaurants and microbreweries and whatever. Um, I don't know, but that's a, that's a good question. Should, should we also just have residential in here as a buyer, right? As a, as a solo standalone building? Yeah, it's um, here, permitted uses are, that's the same. All uses permitted in the residential districts, RA and RB. So that those are permitted. Even multifamily. Um, no, that that comes later. Um, that was a special permit. I think. Uh, yeah, multi like a you know more. It come it comes down here. Let me just so, special permit yeah, section D special permit by the planning board. It's multifamily housing. Yeah, multifamily housing up to eight units is by special permit. But mixed use development would include um, potential, right? Include. Could. Could. Yeah, but mixed use development up to a ratio of 0 0.35 or 4. So, yeah, I, again, I don't know. Um, I guess we're saying if, if you want a permitted use that's a residential building by right. It has to be a mixed use development and then inclusive of some other, you know, use some of the ground floor or some other use in the building. 
But I guess you'll always need a special permit because you need a special permit for multi multi family housing. So even if you have two apartments, you know, you might be allowed to have a retail store. But if you're going to have apartments uh, above, then you'll still need a special permit. That's how I would read this. But mixed use development includes. Sorry, the definition of mixed use development includes residential. Yeah, but that's residential uses up above. Total gross floor area of non residential uses shall be at least 10%. So, again, does that conflict a little bit? Is there a backdoor to get multifamily into by right as long as you do it in um, mixed use development? Well, it's uh, the, the the way to get that through is if you wanted to get it set up, if I were a developer, I'd put in a, an ATM vestibule in the uh, first floor, taking up 10% of the total building size, and then it would classify as a, a mixed use development. Mixed use. Interesting. Right, that's that's, that's not what we're looking for. I mean, that's yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, no, that's a good point. You know, that that's how if I were a developer trying to get around that and just put in housing without any commercial, that 10% of gross floor area is residential use. Yeah. And it fits the definition of mixed use and it yep. would be permitted uses. We want to and it's a permanent it, use. say that the non-residential use, instead of saying at least 10% of the gross floor area of the structure, should we just say that the the ground floor like it can only be non-residential use if it's an excuse. Like why would we want, you know, apartments on the first floor? I mean, it may work out, right? I mean, yeah. it may work that you can have apartments, townhouses or something on the, that would be the first floor. Let me just go to the definition because I thought, did I have it here? Uh, no. But maybe if we make it bigger, then that forces somebody out of the ATM loophole that would they have to spend some square footage on the ground floor that they got to make it generate income. Yes. Uh, keep, keep going up, Mary Kay. Uh, up or down? Uh, uh, up the page yeah. it, if it's. I guess the definitions aren't on there, are they? This no, is just I the, don't have the definition here. Let me see if yeah, I have it's it. just the amendment. Um, um, I think we did have that definition when we had the VMUD from Adam Costa. We did include, you know, like we had to have um, retail on the on the ground floor, apartments only on the second floor. Um, uh, something like that. I don't know, Claire. Can you remember that? I mean, it does. It does say non-residential uses occupying the ground floor and residential uses above on the upper floor. So I think, I, I think of this definition, you couldn't put residential on the ground floor. So if that's the case, I'm just trying to figure out the total gross floor area for the non-residential use shall be at least 10% of the gross floor area for the structure. I mean, all that really does, I guess, is limit the number of stories you have, but that's already limited anyway. Right. Yep. I, I don't know if that, sent, if that last sentence just, maybe we just remove it. I don't know if it does. Right. And, yeah. and, and I also don't know, Julia, anything that precludes you from having residential units on the ground floor. It says residential uses on the ground floor and residential uses above. Non-residential uses, no, it doesn't. It precludes. It excludes residential on the ground floor, which I also don't know that we want that in there. Because I, I think, again, there is a, a, a way, there's a development that would include units on the ground floor. Well, I guess that might be true if it's, you know, if you need a, an accessible unit or something. Correct. So we just scroll down, I don't know where you guys are. So, so 
So what are, um, I mean, my, my preference, and this is just me, is that, you know, we want to encourage, we're, we're not the, you know, we're the economic development committee. We want, we're, you know, we jumped into this to encourage businesses and amenities to come. Um, and I think mixed use is a part of that, but my preference, is, my preference generally would be that we wouldn't want, you know, we want retail on the first floor or commercial uses on the first floor, not residential, but I do understand, you know, I also agree with Mike that, you know, there could be situations where we need to have some on the first floor. And if, if there needs to be an accessible unit, then that's certainly one of those situations. Um, I don't know how we write that in there, but do, do others generally agree with that? Even if it's something, even if we could say something along, along the lines of where the majority or 51% is a non residential use. Of the ground floor? Of the ground floor. You know, because yeah. here, we're, here we're saying, still back in the definition, we're saying basically you can't have residential on the ground floor. So at least but, but the ground floor non residential uses have to be at least 10% of. Okay, so of the gross floor area of the structure. Of course, it is of, of the of the entire structure. It, yeah, I'm more concerned about making sure it's most of the ground floor. Correct. Right. Yeah. Because then they could just throw in parking in the ground floor in the back, and um, I don't know how they would classify it if it'd be residential use, but um, it could be parking, the ATM, and then residential above, which yeah. we also don't want. Now, what section was that on so I can write that change down? Where did the word just... definition of mixed use in the like this is still in the mixed use definition? Okay. We're still hung up on the definition, or at least I'm hung up on it. <laughs> we've we've, um, <laughs> we've gone backwards. <laughs> We're regressing here. No, I, I, I think Mike's onto something here, I, and it might be something as simple as the total gross floor area of the non residential uses shall be at least 50% of the ground floor area of the structure. That allows um, at least 50% of the ground floor to be commercial and allows them the flexibility that if they wanted to put in a, an accessible housing unit on the first floor or you know um, something residential related, uh, that could that could work. Yeah, no, I like that. And so we is it one or the other? Is it 50% of the ground floor or 10%? Gross floor area, the structure. I would take the ten percent out because I don't. I'm. I think all that does is you know restrict going up, but we already. So what do you want to do? You want to strike the ten percent? Yeah. So and so it shall be at least fifty-one percent of the. Or at least fifty percent, I would say. Ground floor area. My other question is, would we be okay with having offices potentially on a second or third floor? As long as it's retail. Or other, what? As long as it's retail on the ground floor. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, that's all-encompassing and encouraging. And that adds to your density too, potentially. Right. And again, I mean, there's 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 only so much space even potentially available. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to have as many options available as possible for somebody who's more creative and able than I am to be able to figure out what's best. I mean, I think office on the second floor and retail on the first is a pretty common mixed use mm -hmm. scenario. Um, I don't know that that's covered here because I right, think but used Mixed use is pretty specifically defined as is that, yeah. residential and commercial. So um, we want, yeah. But again, you know, it's a fine line too, right? Because we did talk about wanting to encourage 
housing because you know we do have a housing diversity issue in town. Um, Shopsy is obviously very interested in that piece of it, and um, you know, and we're interested in it too as far as a a resource for having um, you know potential employees lo who can live local. Um, so I think there's something to be said for that too. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the only, uh, you know, um, having mixed use development is the way we get the residential in there. If someone were um, submitting to the, uh, the planning board, they'd say, I've got um, three uses in my building. On the second floor is office. On the first floor, I've got an art gallery um, right beside a retail shop. All of them are permitted. So that's um, what they would do. Mixed use is the one area that allows us to put in residential with a uh, commercial element. So okay. I don't think we have to worry about the flexibility. It's just, we have to make sure that if someone is promoting the mixed use development that has residential, we also get that commercial entity with it. Gotcha. But I think we're also saying that it's only commercial ground floor, residential, upper floors. Where there, there's no way in here to have a commercial, commercial, residential, or a, a commercial ground floor, office on floors two and three, and then residential above. And if that's you know if that's shooting for the moon in downtown Southboro, um, then I agree we don't need to include it in any way. But there's no way for the mixed use to mix enough. We're just saying if it's a multi-story building. It's either residential above and commercial on the ground floor, or it's all a single use, any of these permitted uses or. Yeah. So maybe, yeah, no, I, I think you're right, Mike, the, the definition is pretty specific and it says um, residential on the ground floor only. Yeah. Re residential, residential above. And that wouldn't in that situation allow for a, you know, second story office space. Yeah. And, and, and no crossing either, right? You can't put residential on the first floor and you can't put commercial on the second floor. So if that's the case, is that whole second sentence unnecessary with the uh, 10%? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. what's, because because you're going to be 100% of something. Yeah. But I, I think what also is, and I hear what you're saying, if, if we say that includes residential on the upper floors, is somewhere in there, should we also say for other uses or, I mean, do we start listing stuff in there? But then you're gonna run the risk of somebody being able to come and build something that doesn't include residential. Well, I mean, we can, we can write that in there. I, you know, I mean, we can write it in however we want. If we wanted to say that you can have commercial, office, commercial, residential. I mean, we can write in however we want. Just we want. At, at, that, at that point, are we getting to, or then are we over explaining it? Are we over? That kind know, of seems it to me. Over regulation, over regulating. Over prescribing. Prescribing, thank you. I'm not a regulator. All right, so just to clarify, we're still on the mixed use development <laughs> <on> definition. Page one. <laughs> and the only change we have so far is we want to strike the 10% of gross floor area and change it to 50% of ground floor area, or did we change our minds on that? We changed our minds on that, I think. So we're leaving it as, as written? No. I think just strike the whole thing, right? Strike the whole sentence. There's, there's no reason to dictate what's on the ground floor. And it makes use development if it's not residential. Because if we're saying you want to do a mixed use residential, you can't have residential for mixed use development. You can't have residential on the first floor. You got to find another way to make that first floor make money. Yep. We're leaving it, leaving it to developer, right? So what part are we striking now? Do we Are we talking about striking? So we're striking the last sentence of the mixed use development definition? Just the one that says the total gross floor of non-residential uses should Correct. be that, that one? Doesn't do the same. 
doesn't do us anything. <laughs> okay. Any more discussion on, on that piece? Yeah, so I'm still unclear. Are we going to do we decide we're going to leave the office space alone? Because, it, you know, in some sense, we're saying we don't want to over prescribe, but at the other sense, we're saying, well, we actually, the way it's laid out right now, I don't think it would allow for a second story office space use. Can we say if there are more than, if there are more than two stories, a second story may also include commercial use? But isn't that already, uh, you, can, you, can, you can do a, a commercial two story building with just commercial yeah. use then it's not mixed use. But I'm saying it could, if, if it's more than two stories, could a second story be mixed use, be commercial and, and a third story be residential? I think that's a scenario we were, right? Yeah, correct. I, I want sure. flexibility in the, in the upper floors. But if you could have already had a two story office building and that's, not mixed are, use. It, right. that's what? Because that's not mixed use. Yeah, but in a mixed use, if you have res the, the problem before is you couldn't have residents on the second. So wouldn't that be already in there? So we don't need to add it because you can already have an office on a office building that's two story. Or even on the third floor, you could have apartments and the first two stories uh, retail yeah, office. office. But does it say that? But does it need to? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it needs to. I don't think it does either. I mean, that's something we can we can ask. But I don't think you're allowed to. I don't think we're giving you the buy right to build that building. Right, I agree. Commercial well, you, office, you, residential. You can. I mean, if you are allowed to uh, to build a three-story building and you're allowed mixed use with retail on the ground floor and um, apartments on the upper floor, can't you have the first two floors um, commercial and the third floor apartments? I don't think by this definition you can. Okay. Well, nothing saying that you can have non-residential use above the ground floor and again we're over prescribing uh, but we're also boxing out a lot yeah if we want to make sure that residential can only go on the upper floors Maybe we have to be more definitive. Non-residential uses occupying the ground floor and any others, and residential uses uses only on the upper floors. Because that basically says you can't have residential on the ground floor, but you can have multiple commercial uses on floors one and two. That, that might be a way to get around it. And, and basically, you must have residential in a mixed use development. Yeah. I agree. We just somehow just to let in other uses, non residential uses on the upper floors. Because, because uh, if, if I'm correct, the, um, the height requirement in there allows for three story buildings, correct? Yeah, to a maximum of 40 feet. Yeah. So, you know. We can also just make this comment to Judy and let her revise it. Yeah, that's that's what I think. <laughs> yeah, that, instead we're of looking trying, for, we're trying looking to for rewrite it, it, if it's a three-story building, we want the the inter the, the second floor to either be able to be commercial or residential. Residential. Yeah. I mean, that would be great in the the downtown retail on the first floor, a couple of offices above it, and residential on the third floor. Yeah. That yeah. would be. So right, what do we want to put in the comments on that so we can. Take this, write this down. What was that last one? Find a way to include non-residential uses on the upper floors. But still being mixed use. Correct. Yeah, because I think that's perfect because offices work great on a second floor, but re you know, retail doesn't, so. Yeah. And that keeps the livelihood of you know, the 24-7 building. Right. There's always somebody there. 
either living yes, or working. Or a co-worker space, something like that too would work well. All right, so I've included non-residential and upper floors and stay mixed use with residential. Does that make sense? Yep. Sorry to get hung up. No, <laughs> any more on the definition of mixed use on the third word down. <laughs> If we can go just piece by piece on this, that, that makes it a lot easier too. So, so on the next thing we have the, the, where it says part two amendment, the districts enumerated by adding the following new district. That's fine. Everybody yeah. is good on that, right? Yeah. Then, uh, sorry, where does it say? I didn't even know. Your section two, your part two amend section 70 district enumerated. That's all oh, we yeah. just. Um, yeah, so we need to, because um, she, it, throughout the document, it's a little bit, she uses downtown business village district or downtown village business district. Um, yeah, that's just clean up stuff. We can, we'll ever take care of that. Yeah, yeah. so we, I, I think we should avoid calling it uh, downtown or no, what is it, a town center? Because, you know, the document she uses is called town center. We already have a town center development. Um, maybe we can just propose something. How do we want to call it? Um, because the other two business villages, village districts will stay the same, right? We have Fayville and Southville. Um, so this has to be, this new district should be clearly a new district. Well, isn't it is downtown business village district? Isn't that the clear new district? So should we just yeah, be consistent? Yeah, that's fine. And then we maybe just we stay can refer consistent to... with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm saying because she refers it to the business. I mean, I don't know what she referred to, but that was my comment. Maybe yeah. Can... No, as long as it's consistent, and I think that's the best. I think downtown business village district is the way to do it because that yeah. that ties okay. it to the other business village districts, but shows that it's something separate. Yeah. All right. Okay. We all agree okay. on that. All yeah. right. On the next amendment, uh, not more than one principle printed, blah, 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 blah. Does anybody have, on part three, anybody have anything on that one? Not more than one principle permitted you shall be located on any lot provided, blah, blah, blah. I don't see that. Where do okay. you see that? Uh, I'm looking on page one of the draft. Um, I have the draft downtown village village district version two, dated October twentieth. That's the latest one I have. Is anybody else working on a different one? I'm sharing my screen with you guys, right? Yep. Correct. Yeah. yeah. We're also okay. right, right there where you have part three amend section. Blah blah. It should be downtown okay. village district. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, then the next section. Uh, you don't have the whole thing on yours, on on the amends. You have amends. No, these are just my comments in blue. So that's why I'm. I, that's why I was. Uh, I didn't copy the whole thing. Okay, gotcha. So just my right. comments. So does anybody that's have anything I'm on? It, you have downtown village district, not downtown village. So that stake on that will just stay. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Stay consistent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, so she that, has it as a the downtown village district up top, and then she has it. It looks like it, it's consistent on this one down the when I read it. Yeah, she she mixes it up a little bit, but that's that's something small. She can All right, but that it. one's uh, stay consistent. I'm just making it out there. Okay. All right. So now moving on to part four, uh, um, amend Article Three use regulation by adding the following new section. Um, Again, stay consistent. So it's still on this, uh, right? It's still consistent. I see on so you, you have a downtown village. Back, I think part four is what brings us kind of back to, um, or four. did we, did we, uh, we, I know that Mike had raised, um, so B, if we're in sex, our, um, part four, um, yep. If we look at B, it, it gives a FAR of 0.35 and then C We're increasing that maximum to 0.4. square footage of 3,000 square feet. Um, do we want to sort of 
talk about why those things are different and should they all be kind of the same? I think um, they should be consistent. I, so, so what it, I'm trying to see, like, what does she have in curious as to on the red line? Was this, was this kind of a, hold on, B had been up to 2,000 square feet. Can you scroll down, Marika? What I'm curious what far. C, what C was before. Permitted use up to 3,000. So, um, oh, C was special permit. Okay. So C is now D. Um, so right, yeah, I think maybe we just want to ask her that because I'm curious as to why why she set it up that way. Um, because yeah, maximum floor ratio 0.35 um, can be any of these things. And permission. Right. So I wonder if it's. Is it, the, is it the type of use that she has? Right. So I'm wondering, is this, so here's what I'm thinking. So if you're building a building, right, and you're going to have multiple uses in it, um, your building needs to be um, at a far 0.35 or 0.4, whatever we decide, right? Now, if you're a tenant who's going to rent in that building, then you're going, but that's not... You can be one of those things. Then, then is it then is it okay? These buy right uses are you know as long as your retail space is under three thousand square feet, then here are the things you can do. Is that do do we think that's what she means? Does that make sense? So, Permitted use. It, it could still be a single use building as a brewery. Right. A bed and breakfast. Correct. But if it's if it's a, a single multiple use. use, is there a difference between the building? and the premises so we're saying the uses of you know of, the building needs to have a far of, of 0.4 or whatever the uses as long as they're under 3,000 square feet because you know if you have a I don't know a 6,000 square foot building you have two tenants as long as they're under 3,000 square feet you don't have to get special permit as long as you're using it for one of these things listed in, in C is that what she's saying I think I think it's just this is only speaking to uses. Yeah, I, I guess that's a good point to make here. This is only speaking about uses. Yeah. I mean, couldn't we could we combine B and C? I mean, I like think. if I've got a, a mixed-use development as a permitted uses that goes up to a FAR of 0.4, I'd like to know that I could put retail in there, but Retail is in C, which is right below it. I mean, conceivably, we could just combine both B and C because they're both by right permitted uses. So combine B and C and say, is it like an and or? I mean, conceivably, right? I mean, if we're talking mixed use, we've always been talking about retail sales with the residential up above it. And what we've done is we've put mixed use in B and retail sales in C. C. It, it strikes me we'd want them combined. I think, I think so. And I think it's gotta be something like permitted uses as follows, or as follows, permitted the building is a 0.4 FAR or single use up to 3,000. Square feet. Square feet or single tenant. Right. Because single use, you could have, how would you have two tenants that are the same use? I mean, you could have two, yeah. two, two tenants that are yeah. the same use. Well, so I think you have to say single tenant. Yeah. yeah. I definitely and think this needs a little clarity because it's just going to lead to, if we're struggling to understand this. How many people are going to understand FAR? Um, I mean, it's. Yeah. It's a pretty common term in the in the development world, so yeah. But, yeah, I don't think it needs to be that the layman can understand it. I think it needs to be that the the developer can understand it. It's, I always I, I always no, feel I these the, terms these terms need to be explained to the public and it uh, should be written out. Absolutely. Do we need to add a definition for FAR? Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's so a pretty easy one I, to add. I asked Judy what, what FAR was, and she explained it to me, and it's not, you know, it's not an incredibly difficult concept. It just wasn't one I was familiar with. So I, I agree, Chris, and, and you're always great at reminding us to, to make sure that we're talking to people and their understanding. But um, yeah. yeah no, I, I, I no, jar, no jargon, no initials, um, and a code at the bottom of the page explains all those terms that people are not familiar with. Most people don't understand this jargon of zoning. So well, in, in addition, um, if you're talking even with a definition of FAR, the, and, and when I, yes, the developer will understand it, but here's the thing, at the public hearing, people are going to wanna to know what are gonna be the size of the buildings, what's gonna be the size of the lot. They need to have a picture, if you have a 10,000 square foot lot, what is the FAR and how is it going to be laid out on there? For those of us who were around on the um, ZAC, I, I wasn't on the ZAC, but I know all the things that came up and you know, $70,000 later, nothing ever happened with the ZAC. So that needs, that really needs to be defined. Yeah. Fair oh, enough. and by the way, one more thing, um, a question that I have, um, I was not involved with the ZAC. However, it just seems to me that the reason that that was first put together and there were all of those meetings was to go through some of this stuff. I mean, Sam, if I'm wrong on this, um, I, I'm glad to, st be, uh, to stand corrected, but it seems to me that after all the meetings that they had, Somebody ought to be able to dig up the documents, whether the uh, planning board has them, the town planner has them in the office. It just seems to me that a lot of this stuff for $70,000 must have already been done. Or something that we could at least crib from. Exactly. And, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hate to, yeah, yeah. And, and Claire, Claire, you're, you're totally Claire, right. And this is something that we talked about like a year and a half ago. Like, why don't we just yeah. start with that? Because right. from my understanding, the downtown portion of the I mean, we're, not we're particularly recreating a wheel here and dealing with things that are very, very simple and straightforward. This stuff has to already exist someplace. Yeah, Claire and everybody, I completely agree that document should be found. A lot of time and effort of, of our one and money, taxpayer section money. of this town. People are going to ask the question, well, what did we do before? Right. So uh, there should be a file and we should be able to pull it. And so we're not reinventing the wheel. And by the so way, I, uh, before we started all this, I actually asked Karina for the Zach report so she couldn't find it. Um, even like a hard copy. I mean, she did have some kind of a map, but that was it. So I'm, I'm wondering if we can't find it anywhere in the townhouse, uh, could we ask Judy Barrett? I'm sure she still has a copy. Could we just ask her to you know, send us another PDF? That makes sense. I can't imagine why. Why not? Yeah. Was she involved with it? Yeah, for $70,000 worth. Did everybody see Sam's comment? He said the Zach material is available, but I don't believe that's much use for us now. Well, I would like to see it. I, I haven't yeah. still, I've been trying to find it anywhere. So can where is it available? Can we admit Sam? I'd like to hear what he has to say on that, like why he thinks it's not relevant. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, where is Sam? Oops. <laughs> He's coming. On the side of the screen. I'll sell you my copy. <laughs> so yeah, Sam should be on. Yeah, but that okay. you know that's not that's not right, <laughs> Sam. We ought to see the copy. Uh, sure, Chris. Not, I'm not I'm not <laughs> suggesting you shouldn't. I was just kidding. I think there was a joke in there. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Chris, it's only a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> and we spent we spent well over a hundred grand, Claire. And if you had the people's time, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars of effort. Oh, okay. Um, you know, it, it's out there. I actually have a copy somewhere that I could maybe dig out. But um, you know, again, um, I think it's you know mildly interesting, but. Uh, I don't recall a huge amount of conversation around this particular 
downtown kind of stuff. Oh, okay. But, but again, I could my memory could be faulty. Doesn't hurt to look. But uh, <laughs> I think I'm just curious, and and again, maybe I wasn't involved, so I don't know. But you know, some of these things that we're talking about, like the Floria ratio, you know, because you know, the Zach came out of the master plan report, if I if I understand my history correctly, and. You know, so in the master plan, the 2008 master plan contemplated a lot of the same stuff we're contemplating now as far as is mixed use and, and development and, you know, streetscape and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just curious as to what some of their hard numbers landed on at that point. Sure. And I think, you know, to the extent they align with what we're talking about now, I think that actually, you know, as much as, you know, Zach's the, the, the Voldemort that we're not supposed to talk about, you know, I think to say, you know, this is consistent with what we talked about 10 years ago and this wasn't controversial, this piece of it was not controversial then, I think helps our case. Yeah, uh, this piece was pretty controversial actually. Oh, the downtown piece? Yeah, I mean, the, the villages um, were a very sensitive issue. And, and again, I, I don't know if other people have the same recollection, but there was a lot of, uh, angst about what was going on in the villages, particularly the village residents were very concerned about possibility of changes there. And so as that got more and more real, my recollection is that the resistance increased substantially and it became pretty clear that it was gonna be very difficult to get it through town meeting. And the big thing was that the, uh, the proposed uh, density bonuses for development in a variety of districts and particularly the residential areas uh, increased the uh, number of uh, residential units that could be built from the something like 800 or so uh, buildable lots at the time to if you use the full density bonus uh, uh, program, which you'd never get to, theoretically, certainly you could do it, but you'd never get to it. But it would it increase that to over a couple thousand units, which again, frightened a lot of people. So um, again, a lot of combination of things and poor communication with the public around it um, uh, and some of the confusion around it, I think just meant that people didn't think it was gonna have a chance to pass a town meeting. I'll take a look, see if I can find what I think is the latest copy of that one that was circulated. Thanks, Sam. Work up a price on that too, Sam, will you? Sure, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I have one other, um, one other comment. Um, if you look at Peter Bemis's proposed building, um, which, I mean, maybe, I don't know how that figures in with the FAR and all that kind of stuff. I, I'm still trying to grasp that. But <clears throat> that building was 6,500, as proposed, was 6,500 square feet. So- How big is this lot? Excuse me? Do you happen to lot. know how uh, big Peter Bemis's lot is? We can- um, basically it's a numerator and uh, denominator. And if his building was uh, 6,500 square feet um, and you know the parcel size, you'd be able to know what the FAR would be for that. Oh, okay. We can, yeah, I'll just look that up on the, the, um, the zoning map because all the parcel sizes are there. <coughs> um, okay, so then the second thing is, um, and I, I, I guess, I mean, I would just think that we're doing this so that somebody like Peter could come in and know that he's not going to need a special permit because his building is going to be in the, in the size. The other thing to keep in mind is that people have to realize I, there is such limited amount of development space down there that really the only place that you could put, we had originally talked about an 8,000 square foot building and everybody just went up in arms over it. Well, if you look at what Peter was planning at 65, 8,000 square feet to me to put something like that down at Park Street is not really that big. And I think Rob was the one who one time mentioned that you have to make sure that it's big enough to make it worthwhile for the developer. Well, that's just my comment. Yeah. So, uh, I, uh, um, yes, because what we want to do is encourage the developers. Um, and I just did a little bit of quick math for Peter Bemis's property. If we have a, a 0.4 FAR, he would need a, um, a parcel of 16,250 square feet. If we go down to uh, 
0.35 FAR. He's looking yeah. at a uh, 18,571 square foot lot. So for an area that is land poor, there aren't very many large parcels. Um, right. You know, quite frankly, 2,200 square feet you know, can make a pretty big difference, which is why I think going to 0.4 is a good thing. But, you know, the the thing, the great thing about FAR is it allows every developer to quickly do the math and figure out what size building they can put on their lot. Gotcha. Which is, with your quick math is not gonna be a whole lot of building and a whole lot of sites. Exactly. Right? I mean, we, we don't yeah. have 18,000 square foot no. lots down there, do we? No. I think we're I think we're boxing on a lot. And it's not, something in here isn't going to allow for a building to be built. Well, part, the Park Street space, if it ever that that has potential. What square footage? I don't know. Roughly, is it an acre? <laughs> um, well, because I think it's a couple parcels down there now, right? Yeah. So it's. And yeah. I'm, I'm just going to bring up the map so that I have it for reference. No. Not only that, we want to make sure like where the dentist office and the bank was, that building's roughly 16,000 square foot there. Right. What if somebody came in and wanted to convert that into a mixed use? So we want to make sure that something like that is able to be included. It's not for the little lots that, that aren't developed yet. It's also for the piece that we have Existing. that could be. So yeah, that's a great I, point, John. Yeah. And I think, you know, well, one, I think size wise, you know, that building would be grandfathered in and I'm pretty sure that's a pretty big lot there too. It's got just that huge parking lot in front of it. So I'm, I'm sure that probably meets the standard, but if, you know, we wanted to go, if we wanted to go up um, a story or, you know, that could change it. Um, or if somebody wanted to take that building down and put up a new building or something. Well, that, that's where I'm a little confused. If they want to take that building down, could they put up the same size building? Or are we uh, yeah, FAR in them out right. of it? Yeah. FAR in. Right. I'm not sure what the rules are for being grandfathered in. Probably not if you're taking down the whole building, but maybe if they're keeping the footprint or the yeah. body. Yeah. Well, then that's, yeah. Yeah. But theoretically, I would love if anyone ever took it down, it would be more of a streetscape set up with the parking in the rear. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Sam. Go. Am I still on audio here? Yeah. You're yes. fast. Um, I just sent the uh, what I thought think is the latest version of the Zach bylaw to oh, wow. several of you for whom I have email addresses. I don't have email addresses for everybody, but uh, sent to John, Julie, uh, Claire, Marika. Um, I think that's it. So John, if you guys could circulate to others who are interested in it. I will have it sent out to the committee. That's my, my last version of it. I think that's the latest one that uh, saw the light of day, but um, if not, <laughs> not the latest one, it's close to it certainly. So what, I got to Venmo you a hundred bucks now? It's a pretty cheap price there. <laughs> <laughs> please, uh, Bitcoin, please. <laughs> Did I get along? Um, John, Lisa has uh, her hand up. Uh, Could you, you want to let her speak then? Yeah, you bring go her ahead, in? Lisa. Hi, thank you. How was everybody tonight? Hey, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Just a quick thing. So one of the things I shared with the Board of Selectmen at our meeting the other night was was 11 Main Street because that is one of the larger lots. And it's roughly just under 70,000 square feet. Of okay. lot size. So you would be allowed at the 0.35, it would come out to, you'd be allowed uh, 24,500. And what's currently sitting there is 22,104. So oh, under the 0.35, it would actually allow you to go a little bigger than what they currently have. So I just, I wanted to share that because I had looked it up uh, the property cards uh, before the Board of Selectmen's meeting. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. That was it. Thank you. As a general feel, it feels like we're not reducing ourselves. bigger than I thought of what we have. Yeah, it is bigger than we, we keep walking around saying 15,000 or 16,000. So that's significantly larger. I wonder if that was the footprint. And then there's some second story space. I don't know if the second story goes all the way across. I don't know. All right. Okay, well, do we want to pick apart the rest of these or? Yeah. See what comes from 
comments so from everybody else. What we have so far is that we are we still in agreement we want to change the FAR from 0.35 to 0.4? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then the next one would be we want to have uh, mixed use development or any combination thereof still. Because we yes. just said mixed use. Okay. And then uh, down below the next one, we had craft brewery. Uh, we want to change the wording on that to microbrewery because we have that in the uh, definitions. Yeah. And then we go down a few more to permitted uses up to a maximum of 3,000 square feet per establishment, or do we want to change that to a, a point for FAR? So, yes, I think we're combining C and, and B, right? So we're yeah, saying... So. FAR point four and so but but it, but they're sort of different things, right? Because the FAR has to do with the size of the the building, right? And the and the uses, the three thousand square foot use has to is per the individual tenant. So it might be the same as the building, or it might be that there are multiple three thousand square foot or less tenants in one building that has an FAR of 0.4 or less, right? I, I think it's one heading Clarity. that says, yeah, I think it's one heading that says permitted uses with a maximum FAR of 0.4 and a single tenant, tenant use of up of. to 3,000. Yeah. And, and it's all those things, it's all those things. Yeah, because, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, um, it's one thing that Sam said while he was talking, um, it's always the, the fear if you say um, the FAR 0.4, but don't limit the retail size, someone's going to say, we don't need a 10,000 square foot uh, Walgreens coming in right. downtown. So if you, it, and Sam makes a good point, if you wanna keep that fear away, um, people, if they see the um, 3,000 square foot limit per establishment on retail sales, they won't have to worry about that Walgreens coming in or no. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Someone's going to say we don't need a Walmart downtown, and people are going to say there's not a site large enough. But it's that fear um, that you want to keep away from. Agreed. Walmart can make a three thousand square foot space. <laughs> Target was making like micro, like yep. mini stores for a while. Right. Well, they're, they're, they're are... going to become yeah, they're going to become retail. They're going to be the pickups, right? They're going to be that last mile. That. And, and they're, they're going to be the powerhouses that can come in and do it. And they can target and drop a unit here and they can ship all their stuff to it. So, Oh, you know what? I just want to make sure, Marika, can you add to uh, this up where you have co-work center? Can we just have that added to the definitions? Yeah, I have that okay. in my comment. Yeah. So I'm um, just reading through my notes. I apologize. All right. Anything down below? So we have the retail sales that... Marika has her comments on. Um, yeah, and I just just double check with Judy if this would be by right. Then I guess I'm assuming it would be. But. Oh, and and I'm sorry, D one should be three thousand, not two thousand, right? To match up with C. Um. He, yeah. So I don't know why here she said two thousand. Yeah, it should be three. Um, to match up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's two thousand. We may have that. The FAR probably should change too. Yeah. 0.4. Yeah. And then this should be yeah. Do you think? Um, so what change do you think that point about the use as a veterinarian, animal hospital, or dog kennel downtown? So we're going to change that, just sorry, that, that 2,000 to 3,000 square feet under yeah. I, just to, to keep it consistent, correct? Yes, I have okay. that comment, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just putting it on mine. I'm just brain yeah. dead today. I That's apologize. So Julie, you're asking, do we want vet's offices down there? You want a dog kennel downtown? <laughs> no. You got a new dog, right, Mike? I got one up the street. It's great. I walk them up there. <laughs> but you, didn't you just get a new dog? A year ago, yeah, yeah. A year ago, yeah. Um, 
year ago yesterday, two days ago. Um, nice. I, I don't I don't know. Is it Yeah. I, good, good to be why is it even in here? Is that a is that a kind of a downtown kind of a thing? I don't know. <laughs> well they used to have the animal the, the, the animal hospital on eighty five, which is just outside, so I don't need I mean, I, I love animals, I'm not necessarily opposed, but I'm just thinking if we want to <laughs> encourage certain uses and I don't know, maybe the residents have I wouldn't put a kennel like, down there. No. Dog well, I, is it because of just the way it, the special permit because of what they have there? You know what I mean? For, for the way that they did medicine? I don't know. Is that <laughs> way? Because they have... it used to be there because this is a list that used to be there. So there's... Um, Oh, right. So that that's right, a whole so there so, Okay, so we just didn't yeah. take it out. Gotcha. That was already there. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't care. I have no problem with it. Take it out. Just, I'm just trying to think of what people are going to get. <laughs> What's the dog saying? He's saying, I leave it. My dog, yeah, he's, he's in favor of I guess the dog kennel downtown. It's incredibly specific. <laughs> it's incredibly specific for no good reason, right? It's, right. It's, I think it's the holdover and the, Get rid of it. And it's also not the kind of use that you want to encourage down there, right? So is it is it worse if we take it out and people say, why'd you change it to take it out? Or is it worse if we leave it in and people say, why do you want a dog kennel downtown? I, yeah, I, I say we leave, I say we leave it in. Kennel? What about outdoor space? Are they allowed to have dog cages outdoors? I mean, how does that work? If you have a dog kennel, I mean, you have a bunch of barking dogs. Yes. I think out. there's a difference between having a veterinarian and a dog kennel. Well, unless the kennel like is kept inside, <coughs> you know, maybe the vet needs it to board the dogs. If they board them just for a couple of days, they might not have outdoor kennels. But it could be an indoor kennel. So, I mean, I'd leave it. My thing is leave it, and if anybody else hates it, we could take it up. You guys want to take it out? I'm okay with that, but what about a cattery? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not a cat kennel instead of a dog kennel? The zoning code allows You're right, that's segregation, so. <laughs> we have a gecko. Where does that go? Oh, God. <laughs> On the fourth floor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we take out just the dog kennel part, but I'm okay. I bet I put the veterinarian in the animal hospital. Let's bracket it a, and, and let, let that be somebody else's fight. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, let's take the kennel out, though. I don't see the, the kennel. I mean, hospital, yeah. that's not, yeah. Okay. Or, or indoor, indoor dog kennel. Well, how, indoor, how, about indoor a, animal. how about a floral shop? We just <laughs> lost one. We lost the best one. I love that place. I used to buy, they had these little flower voters that came in a little small glass vase, and it was like a nice little bouquet. And that you could get for like seven dollars and nine dollars or like fifteen dollars a difference, and they were the best. They they live forever. I used to bring them to my wife every every week. They're just great. I, I miss the English guy. I wish they stayed. I, I'm heartbroken over that one. It's it's too bad. They were great, and so I'd love to see another flower shop downtown. I'd like to see that one come back, ideally. But. And also, John is husband of the year and brought his wife flowers every week. Yes. <laughs> thanks, thanks, John. <laughs> hey, she puts up with me. I gotta do that. <laughs> so, all right. So we got rid of dog kennel. <laughs> We're gonna get in trouble for that. <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. this is what kills it. I don't have a dog in that fight. Ha ha. Dad humor. Anyway, all right. Uh, all right. Then don't sit there. So, what? The, I'm, I'm, I'd love to like, I wish we could be a fly on the wall and figure out how some of these things came into being when this was written. Like, is that a normal thing to have a mobile home or travel trailer used as a dwelling or business for more than 30 days? Uh, is that a normal downtown thing? I've seen it in a couple. Um, it's usually uh, put there as a buy right use in case someone has to um, gut their house and uh, redo oh. it to the okay. trailer on site so um, they can live there as opposed to getting um, 
Gotcha. By a hotel. A at least that's okay. what I've seen in other places. All right, that makes sense then. Thank you. Leave it. You sent me a special permit for it anyway. From the board more than 30 board. days. From the so more than 30 days. days. So theoretically less than 30 days, you wouldn't need a special permit. Yeah, you just right. drive it around <laughs> every 29th day. <laughs> Park it on all those parking lots. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, okay, so now uh, moving on. So we've got to medical dental. Office, so I'm I'm switching pages. So we have multifamily housing up to eight units. No problems with that one. No. Anybody? Um, <clears throat> where are we now? Back up a little bit. Just. Stop right there. Okay. So on your right here, it has medical dental office, multifamily housing up to eight units on uh, number four on section D. Yeah. Every, no, no comments, questions on that. Not too big, not too small. I mean, I'd love to hear Shopsy's opinion on that, but yeah. Uh, and again, I, I know when we were talking about without having a lot of details, um, I know when we were talking about, you know, what the triggers are for low income housing, I think the ratio ends up being like one to eight, right? At least if, if you have eight, at least one of them has to be. Exactly. And then, it, and then the ratio is up from there, you know, yeah. you get more. But yeah, but um, eight sort of the trigger for needing. That's a start, yeah. Yeah, okay. but, but what's this, what's this, what this is saying is if the, you know, the mixed use building, what is it, 11 Main Street that we were talking about earlier? The 20, yeah. 4,000 square feet building if somebody wants to come in and do a mixed use um, commercial retail on the ground floor and residential above it's more than eight units or if it's at least eight units it's going to be a special permit by the planning board right so if somebody wants to come in and do something to that site it, it's special permit but it could be the type of building that we're talking about it's just because it's up to eight units so I'd love Shopsy's opinion on that. So maybe Shopsy wants to make it a higher number of buy right units before a special permit is needed. Yeah, I will bring that up to them at the next meeting. All right, well, how's this reading? That multifamily housing up to eight units. Shouldn't so, it be something like greater than eight units or if, if we wanted to build two, two units or three units, we would need this? No, because if it's up to eight units yeah then theoretically if it, you had a three you're units you're okay um i think someone yes. had raised the point i don't remember who brought this up but you know is every developer going to come and build seven units so they don't trigger the yeah no that was me getting hung up last week see i no, agree that, like michael said that it's up to eight units you still need a special permit multi-family housing oh up. that's under special permit yeah, we're on, we're on so that's not right. That's oh, saying oh, up right, to eight right, units. Yeah. So one, two. So I question that. Yeah, and why do we? Why does the medical I, I dental office need a special? Should unit I say less than eight units instead of up to eight units, or over eight units? I think it's more over eight, eight units. units right? Over eight units. More than eight units, you should have. Uh, let's see if by right. I'd rather be higher. I mean, over, over 10 or something or over 12. Because again, with the... Well, I don't want it up to. It needs to be over. Even yeah, eight, more than, uh, you no, know what I mean? I, I just need that up to change to over. So I... That's what I think. So I'm confused because... Thank you, so for just backtracking to three, medical or dental office, that falls under D, permitted use by special permit for the planning board. But medical and dental office is actually also under A, under B, B2, permitted use up to the maximum floor ratio. Um, professional or business office bank. Oh, but not including, sorry, medical or dental office. I'm, I'm yeah. What, what? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I get it. I did the same thing the other day. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Can uh, I jump in just real quick? Yeah. So isn't it, and again, maybe I'm reading this incorrectly, but it only triggers a special permit if it, it exceeds the maximum of your 0.35 or 0.4, whatever it ends up with, or 
exceeds 3,000 square feet per establishment. So if you're under that for um, those items, then you don't need a special permit. For, for anything under? Right, if it's, with, it's within, if it exceeds what you have set as your by right, which is your 0.4 or your 3,000 square feet per establishment, then you would need to go before the special, for a planning board for a special permit for these six items. That, but then in that case, why are these not listed under B? Because, uh, or yeah. wait, under C. And they should just be added there because we already state there that it's uh, up to 3,000 square feet. Yeah, no, I think two through six, you need a special permit for, regardless of size, right? Uh, uh, no, I, I think I, if that was Lisa, I, I think she made a, a really good point um, because if it does not exceed the square footage per establishment, the, the exceeding the square footage requires the special permit. So if you had a medical or dental office that had 1500 square feet, I, I, I could see someone arguing that they wouldn't need the special permit. No, because, but D says permitted use by special permit only, or oh. um, that was my improvised, but any so the, the things that need a special permit are anything in B and C that okay. exceed the ratio okay. and veterinary, animal hospital, dog kennel, and dental office medical. Okay, so, okay. Right? Sorry, I was, I was assuming um, everything underneath one was um, D. Part, yeah. part of that, yeah. No, I, no, I think I take that back. The mar it'd be helpful if the margins were like, like different. It's hard when they're all straight. So, So I'm thinking like a developer and I thought that one of the reasons for rewriting this was to put in enough um, flexibility so that a developer could know exactly what they could do, what the limitations were without having to get a special permit. So everything we've talked about up till now, Claire, you don't need a special permit for. Understood. So, but now it's saying if you want to put in a dental office, you have to have a special permit. Right. Yeah. If it exceeds 3,000 square feet or no, point anyway. Four. No, regardless. just in general. Yeah. Regardless. Just in general. Yeah. 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 I think maybe we want to move medical dental up to up to BC. And make it by right. Yeah, right. I, I mean, the only reason I wouldn't want to do that is again because we're trying to encourage more amenity type stuff. But at the same time, if we have a mixed use development and somebody wants to put their doctor's office over the flower shop, over John's flower shop, then <laughs> we, um, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. No. Is there any reason, do we know like why that was in, uh, was that in the old bylaw that, that that was excluded down there? Why, is there? I think so. And if well, so- and There was nothing by right in the law. And, and frankly, I think this is this is going, you know, we're talking about this as if this is like, okay, yeah, this is stuff is by right. I think this is actually in general going to be one of the more controversial pieces. Cause I think as it stands right now, there's not really, there's nothing by right. Right? You have to get a permit. No, my question is, is there a reason that that uh, medical offices, dental offices weren't allowed down there? Is there is there another bylaw? Is there a, uh, something in our zoning somewhere else that I, I am just missing? That That's why it's... There, I'm trying to see on Marcus thing where that was mentioned. Because it's under special permit only for medical and dental um, and veterinarian hospital. So I didn't know if there was some reason that that type of a thing is not allowed downtown without a special permit. I, I, that, that was my only question. I think we strike it from here and strike it from B as well, where we 
Number two, professional business office or bank, but not including a medical or dental office. Right. So in section B, like, I yeah. think, why, why wouldn't we let it in? And, and I mean, again, it's not like I, I'm, I'm waffling because, you know, I prefer the more retail type uses to the office type uses. But in a mixed community, I'm fine having both. And yeah, it seems it just seems odd, I think, to exclude medical and dental when we're allowing other similar type things like professional or business office or bank. I think if you say professional or business office, you, you're that inclusive of a medical or dental office. I would think so. They sound professional to me. <laughs> so we want to strike number three, medical or dental? Out of the, uh, well, we want to, I guess, move, move it, it up. up to DC. I, I, I'd say strike, strike three, and, and then, then say including not and take out, but not. Yeah, and then strike that sent last half of B two. If you scroll up to B two, it singles it out. Right there. Yeah, right here. Um, okay. So we're striking three from D3 and then we're D3. taking off on B2. Uh, yeah. to, are we striking the but not including a medical or dental office? Yeah, so you can just strike out but not after bank. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I'm trying to keep track of it on mine too. I know, I hope I still get it tomorrow. But it's okay. Well, <laughs> between the two of us, we'll get half of it right. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking notes also. And again, um, this is still just our, you know, nice. we'll have plenty more opportunities to do this again. But I'd like to, at, at some point before the, the, when we need to have these in the six, I'd like to get a copy of it out to everybody, make sure we're all on the same page, that we made all the corrections to it. Because like I said earlier, I think having one document from the EDC to Judy Plus, you know, again, if anybody has any of their own comments that they think of afterwards, it's fine. But I just think it would be easier. So, all right. So, Bye. Moving, now we're on to, so we on, I've changed the medical dental office. And now on the next one, we have multifamily housing and we're, we're changing the up to to over. Is that correct still? Over eight units. Yeah. Over eight units. Okay. Then I'm looking at private garage one kitchen. Uh, looking so at because that that eight unit thing that came from the old bylaw, right? Yeah. So is is it the rule as it is now that even with special permit you can't have more than eight units and you need a special permit to have up to eight units? It's the way it reads right now. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So that might be controversial. I don't know. Mimi is here, I think, if she wants to comment. Again, we're still talking about downtown. Mm -hmm. Anything over eight units, like how do you get that on the site? And if you can, we, we think it's worth a special permit. That's true. Right. right. Okay, Mimi just said, um, did everybody say that changing multifamily housing to over eight units wouldn't allow multifamily housing under eight units. Can we uh, allow her to talk? Because if you don't mind, Mimi, I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate uh, your input on that. One sec. Please. Nice having somebody complaining here. Thank you. Hey, Mimi, uh, you're allowed to talk. How are you? I'm well. So why would that, changing that to over, because I, I, I read that as a special permit is required for over eight units, not up to. So uh, because, now I'm, I'm confused. Well, it's not an allowed use under by right. It's only an, un, the way it's written now, it's only an allowed use up to eight units units under special permit so if you just change it and not add it to 
an allowed use by right, it wouldn't be allowed only, only for over eight units. Mimi, I have a question. Would um, our, the, the inclusion of the mixed use development language that allows residential, that would still, so that would allow for residential units, presumably <laughs> under eight, um, but we wouldn't, it, I guess what it would preclude would be uh, apartment building with eight units, up to eight units that didn't have a retail component, right? Because it would have to be part of the mixed use. Correct. Okay. That's what we're saying. You can't just build a, you can't just build you can't a apartment building. building. can't build an apartment building, yeah. Cool. So now that we've heard that from Mr. Latrell, do we still want to change that to over or leave it back to up to? I think so because, sorry, go ahead. I think, yeah, I agree. Mike. So I think if, if it's anything that's over eight units, yeah, special permit. Um, but if it's under, fine, as long as it's, it just has to be part of mixed use. So what's not loud is a update unit apartment building. And, and I, I would argue that even over eight units, I'd wanna have a mixed use component. Yeah. If, if there's a site large enough to take um, an eight unit multifamily housing property and we're not pushing it for mixed use with a commercial element, we're not doing our economic development right. job. So, um, you know, I say keep it, keep it like it is. The up to or the over? Over uh, eight. Oh, okay. What was that, Rob? I, 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 I'll go with uh, everyone's um, uh, opinion, but if someone proposed an eight unit multifamily housing complex, that doesn't necessarily help us from an economic development perspective. Oh, yeah, no. Right. So we should try to write this as if we're trying to force a developer to consider mixed use. So however we end up doing that, whether it's over or up to. Well, I think we are by in section B, we don't list residential as a permitted use by right. It's mixed use, there's residential above because you have to have commercial on the ground floor. So I think we're we're forcing residential to come along with res with commercial. Well we do have we do have all we do have at by right residential in A, right? Because A is permitted uses, all uses permitted in residential districts R A and R B. I don't know. But if not multifamily. Was. Yeah. Right. You can right, build okay. a single unit. Yeah. I think. I think that's right. And you can't even build a two family until there's some little clause down here that, that something's been a, a single family residence for two years or something. So, yeah. Okay. Well, so which is also your, good. But your opinion, Rob, is that leaving it as up to eight units pushes more commercial than residential? I, it, it, it comes down to word choice, I guess. I just want to like, I want people when they consider putting housing in the downtown and having multiple units to always consider commercial. Okay. Even so, you know, right now we've added as by right, multi-family, uh, sorry, um, mixed use. That's some sort of combination. Um, and, but if you wanna have more than eight units or whatever it is, it's special permit, but can we also add that any, you know, can, can we, why, why don't we write it in there to say that any residential component that doesn't fall under Res A or Res B um, should, should have a mixed use component? Can we just say that? We can, but I think we have to say it both places where we allow units one through seven as part of a mixed use development and then a, by special permit, multifamily over eight units with commercial or with mixed use within a mixed use development. So do we, Rob, it's, it's word choice. Do we want to just ask them their, like the Judy's opinion on that and just leave it to them to figure out on, on section four, whether it says up to or, or over for the word choice and express what we yeah, want. Yeah, I think we just tell her what we want, that it's gotta be part I agree. of any sort of, you know, multi-unit residential um, 
building has to have a mixed use component. Just because with what, what, what Ms. Luttrell was saying, you know, and then listening to Rob, I mean, I, I, it just made me more confused. I'd just rather make sure we do it the right way. Cause I, I agree, we all want the same thing. We'd rather see a commercial component to that mixed use. <laughs> What do people think about indoor recreation, athletic or exercise facility being a special permit as opposed to a by right? Is there, I'm curious what the reasoning behind that is. I mean, I guess, I don't know. Mimi's got a comment she just sent in. She said, just remove multifamily as a use if you only want to encourage commercial with residential. So call it mixed use housing, mixed, mixed use with residential unit, with up to eight residential units. Which was our original intent. intent. Well, it, uh, I, if we do that, then we definitely want to make it over because yeah. we want to make it by right up to eight. Up to, yeah. So mixed use with more than or over eight residential, residential units. Mixed use development with over you, eight residential So again, back to six um, under D, indoor recreation, athletic or exercise facility. If somebody wants to put in a yoga studio or something, that's a something that makes sense to put as a buy right or to talk about having as a buy right. I agree. I think it makes I think it makes sense. To have it by a special permit. No, to have it as a buy right. right. Yeah. I agree. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so strike. I mean, nobody's going to put in, um, you know, Planet Fitness down there. And again, it would still be subject to the three thousand square foot size limit, which is pretty small for a, yes. you know, it, it, that's not a Planet Fitness. That's somebody's yoga. That's studio. a personal trainer type situation. Yeah. yeah. Or like, strike this. Strike okay. this all together. Especially in the post-COVID world. Totally right, because there's only going to be like six people in that three thousand square feet. Uh, that's kind of tight, though. <laughs> Plexiglass in between. Yeah. Mimi, how is that reading to you? Or the yoga studio? <laughs> Good. But the, the preceding sentences that you talked about, are we, we got the wording down. Uh, as far as the multifamily housing? Mixed use development with multifamily housing over eight residential units. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Instead of and remove the multifamily housing altogether, just leave it mixed use with over eight. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, however, those words go together. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, me. <laughs> All right, E. I didn't really see anything under E that jumped out at me. I think it's all fine. I do, uh, yeah. Yeah, nothing in E. So prohibited uses, sorry, on F. Yeah. So anything that's not listed above are pro is prohibited. So I'm just, 
just want to go back and look at some of those definitions again then because that means that anything that's not specifically listed is prohibited. I don't like that reverse language because if this is a, you know, look at, you know, all the problems we've had recently with the zoning bylaw because it was something, a document that was written, I don't know, 60 years ago. I don't even know when it was written. But what uses might there be in half a century from now that we're not thinking of right now that are going to be prohibited? And, you know, I think in some ways retail encompasses a lot, restaurant encompasses a lot, but I'm just, I don't know. Again, I, I don't want to go in the, too far in the other direction either, but prohibiting everything except for specifically enumerated things is not, my lawyer brain doesn't like it. No. Or do you make it any use not listed above by special permit? Yeah, I think that's better. Right. So when yeah. the drone training facilities come in, means never ever any yeah. yeah, and like we don't know what what kinds of new uses people are going to be looking for in yeah, right. then, you know decades artificial ahead. robot manufacturing you know, locations right. So I agree. Sorry, Mike, can you say that again? I just not saying prohibited uses, but any use not listed above requires a special permit. Yeah, because then if somebody wants to come in with you know whatever it is, they've got to go to a special permit, even if it's a you know, through less than 3,000 per feet, single right. building or something. Are things like, I mean, if you think about now, even with things like a, a lab would be allowed, you know, I don't think it would, unless I'm missing something. Right. You know, like I'm just trying to think of something that's not included that maybe we wouldn't have a problem with. And like you say, jobs that we don't even know about yet. Exactly. Maybe Night Watchman will be back. <laughs> Ah, both my feet just fell asleep. I had them on the coffee table. Won't do that again. Oh. Don't lock your knees. I know, right? Wow. Okay. Need a, need a standing desk. <laughs> All right, G. Um, I, I think we'd get lost in G if we start picking this apart. I mean, I think that. Yeah. Plenty of other people will have um, comments on this and, and opinions. And I think that we've kind of talked about it before. And I think if Judy's done anything. I did have tweet, one question. And, and, and like, I, I, I don't totally take your point and I won't dive into this too much. But um, as far as a, a front setback, it's questions, I think, for Rob. Um, if we're talking about like, trying to encourage a true, you know, streetscape urban as I don't want to use the word urban, but you know, sidewalk, you know, urban, space, urban. parking or whatever in rear. Is 10 feet too big for is a front setback? Yes. Okay. Uh, most uh, sidewalks to be ADA compliant uh, have to be five feet. Um, but it depends upon if you want to go to the right of way. Um, right. The the more you lessen the front yard setback, um, the more development potential you have on um, any site. So, so do we want zero front yard setback? Mm, well, it, here's the thing. Um, one has to assume that even if it's a by right use, they're still going to have to go to site plan in front of the um, uh, planning board. And that's where the planning director can say, hey, listen, even though the setback is zero, we'd like you to make sure you account for the sidewalk and maybe a couple of plantings. So, you know, if you go to zero, it gives them much more flexibility. Do you know many towns that actually have a zero for a uh, setback? I know, the thing is that Judy's first draft had zero. And, and um, I mean, so I don't know why she put in 10 this time. And the same for minimum lot area. In her first draft, she said, you know, we, we don't need a minimum lot area for a, a downtown business village. Um, let me see what she said. Because you're going to want to build a max. So yeah. She said it created needless non-conformity problems uh, yeah. for small property owners. So I don't know why she added those in now. Yeah, I think I think Medway actually went down and just um, removed the, the front yard setback. Um, but I'm just gonna hop in and double check that right now. Can I just ask a question, John? 
It's yes, guessing. please. Sorry. So didn't she add these in? And again, I could be completely wrong because we had talked about green space and walkability and bike trails and uh, being able to put like picnic tables or, or seating, you know, um, like rack. buildings. So I'm wondering, I could, I could be wrong, but I thought that's why she had said she would have to add these in. That makes sense, Lisa. I think that's, I think that's right. And, and bike racks, another thing. But I still think um, that having it option is zero because you might not need that everywhere. You might want it at some places and then planning board or the developer or whoever can step in and say, okay, well here, you know, even though we don't need by, you know, by law, we don't need any, but here we'll put in 10 feet so we can have a picnic table or we can have a bike rack or we can have a bench and some, you know, garden, whatever. So, but I think she added it down here. She says, you know, the maximum front setback may be increased for purposes of amenities such as plaza, square, courtyard, entrance, sidewalk. So I think that's maybe what you're talking about, um, but not, not in these um, areas. But so let me just ask one more question then. If you put it to zero and you're doing something by right, you're not going to have planning board or anybody um, other than... You know, if it's done by right, who is going to tell them to, uh, you know, do it to 10 feet or 15 feet or whatever. If you leave it at zero, there's, there's, what's the oversight on that? And again, it's just a question. I don't know. No, uh, so if I might, um, I, sure. uh, uh, I had a friend who worked in uh, Medway. Um, I've just put in the chat the language that uh, Medway uses in their central business district. Um, and it basically says the principal building shall be set back a minimum of 10 feet from the front lot line. Architectural features such as bay windows, porches, balconies, porticos, canopies, et cetera, shall not be subject to the 10 foot minimum setbacks. So if we want to make it five, if we want to keep it at 10, but language like that might give us some flexibility for um, energizing the streetscape while still um, you know, having that uh, oversight that um, was just mentioned. I really like the term energizing the streetscape. That's a good one. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, think... I was going to say it just it forces forces any building developer to do something within that 10 feet, you know, which would be energizing things. <laughs> But you don't give them the chance to go to zero either, right? Yeah. So that's, again, I, th I think we can take apart this all day long and if somebody else is going to do the same, but I agree, it's zero or 10. I think, I think it's minus 10. I'm okay with either. Um, I do like uh, maybe adding the, the verbiage that Rob just put up though. For the ten feet, for the setbacks, it's exclusive or excluded from that. And but you could you could put a front deck out there, right? Yeah, 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 and that would allow for restaurants to have patio seating, which we know is yeah. yeah. everybody wants. Put up their heat lamps. John, huh. just kidding. The I'm tents came in today, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so the restaurants got them today. That the awesome. twenty by forties at Ola and at uh, awesome. Tomasos. That's awesome. Heaters still still working on it. A lot of places that I've talked to are sold out until next May, which does me zero good. But anyway, so. Uh, so. Uh, Trying to see if I can cut paste what Rob said. Won't let me. Rob, could you also copy that just into an email to share? Yeah. My computer. Said. Okay. John, I just sent that to you. Thank you. And 
Marika just forwarded it to you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I forwarded it to Who wants it from me? If we can just put that on that in this document so we can. Oh, okay. I like having that we've got all of our things on one piece that we can go over. All right. I will I'll add this later. I'm just okay. gonna so on separate so I'm looking at uh, the height regulation. So initially we were at 35 feet uh, and now it's 40 feet. How tall, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to just gauge how high a 40 foot building is. Like in town, what would that be? Like uh, the um, Ken's Food, that big warehouse, is that 40 feet tall? I'm just trying to uh, get an idea. Mike, maybe you'll even know, remember this from, from the public safety building. Yeah, How tall is the public safety that's building? So I'm trying to think at least to the, to the eaves. Just, I mean, they're... Just think of four basketball courts high. Well, I mean, if, if, if a floor, if a ground floor is 12 feet and a 10-foot floor to floor, which is high for an office of what we're talking about, you're tapping out at three stories, four stories. Yep. You can't get to four stories, right? At a 10 foot. The police and fire station, John, is probably 30. 35? Just, just, yeah, just to the eve, not the peaks of the, you know, the, the roofs, but just okay. the, the two stories, probably yeah. pushing 30. That's what I was thinking. Okay. But that's, you know, got big uses and everything in it. Um, so to the eaves, that would be 40 foot. So when we're talking about than, building height, that's eve height. That, at, or is that peak height? Well, I don't know what we said. We split those hairs somewhere once before, I remember. But it's um, not defined on this. But if we say a maximum building height of 40 feet. That's peak. And, and three stories. Or we, or we maybe should have defined it. Maybe we did this once before. You know, maximum building height of 40 feet to the roof line or, or lowest roof line. Or I, we said this once before in a document. I remember we talked about it. I just couldn't be too, and I couldn't remember what it was all. I, I remember thinking 40 feet sounded tall to me, like a big building for downtown. Right. Like right. if I was in a butter and I had a 40 foot building that, that all of a sudden was across from me or next to me, I think that would be. Maybe we said something like to the lowest roof or to, to the. To the highest roof? Of, to, the, to the highest roof or, or 30 or 35 to the start of the pitch of the roof so that we would encourage you know, sloped roofs with, while yeah. still being able to use that upper space. We, we said something once upon a time. How high is the Reliant building? Which one's that? The one on Newton Street, the medical oh, the school. Medical. That's under 30, I guess. That's not very high. Is that two, is that two stories? That's two stories? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I say it's probably 30, 30, 35. And again, here, if we're saying a minimum ground floor height of 12, Right. What's that? 28 so to like, get. Right. So it's only three stories. 28 to get to 40. Stories. Maybe three story, stories and like some attic storage attic space. space. Yeah. Even a nine foot floor to floor. Yeah. So it's. Is it normal to have minimum and maximum floor heights, ground floor heights? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of that? I was going to say, what's the purpose of a maximum ground floor height? Yeah. That uh, doesn't let you put in a. 20, 25 foot warehouse. I guess. Uh, it's not an improved use anyways, right? No rock climbing gym. Or, or a, <laughs> yeah, a, a, right, an indoor rec facility, right? Um, no indoor skydiving. Single, single, single use up to 3,000 feet, yep. right? I think, I, I don't know. I mean, again, I don't see a ton of these, but it, I think it's okay. That, yeah, I'll leave it for now. Yeah. See whatever like I said, like Mike said earlier, I don't want to pick this much. These, these are going to get. These are, this will be good for planning and, and other people to, and to 
a much higher pay grade than me and, and expertise in these to go through. All right, any more on that on 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 G? Okay, moving on then. And uh, anybody think on H? <clears throat> So can you even build a four-story building um, when you have a height limit of 45? With, you well, know, you 12. Can, I think you can get in there. And then three tens. Yeah. That'd be 42. Now what if there's a basement floor? Does that count as a floor? For a floor, for a floor story, because like that yeah. eleven Main Street, that go you can go down <laughs> in a, a, a flight of stairs into there. So that you know what I mean. So that's actually. So I didn't know I if that so. counts. I don't think so. Somewhere is defined. Yeah. What the floor is above grade, yeah. above grade. Wouldn't the building department offer some input into um, the total FAR, whether or not basement area counts towards that anyway? I don't okay. think it does. Wondering. The <laughs> co-consultant came. I don't think it does that. Okay. So nothing on H. Um, Marika does. No. I was just wondering. Mimi just said a basement counts, but a cellar does not. All right, excuse my ignorance. What's the difference between a basement and a cellar? <laughs> I'm serious. I, I, I admit, I don't know. You need to have no idea. in your basement. Do you, want, do you want me to answer that question? Yes, please. <laughs> it's, it's defined in our bylaw as a basement is 50% above ground, at least 50% above ground, a cellar is at least 50% below ground and a cellar is not uh, habitable for humans. Okay, that makes sense. So okay. I think the example, John, where you're just giving it in, in 11 Main Street there, you could go like downstairs and there was, that would be a, that'd be a basement that was habitable. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mimi. Whereas just pure storage would be a cellar, right? In Right, mostly subsurface. What's funny is, you know, I'll probably remember nothing else about this meeting, but I'm now going to know the difference between a basement <laughs> and a cellar for the rest of my right. life. That's going to be what that's tucked in that with that little piece of useless information that I'll always have. I love it. You're I welcome, John. Everybody. Thank you. I really <laughs> didn't know there was a difference. And the town hall has a cellar. I like Claire, cellars for wine. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, <laughs> so moving on so so on to section i anybody have anything on i i don't understand what z means but i might just be tired what what means three, three the affordable housing part where no, i i one c sorry I see. Um, depth in the building, so from the front door to the back of the building, shall be the lesser of thirty feet for sixty percent of the depth of the building. So it can't be more than thirty feet deep. Uh, correct. Cor cor yeah. Maximum depth of street level commercial. <laughs> But what goes in the other 40% of the building? Oh. 40% uh, the other 40% of the depth. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, can't the commercial space have back, back of house? I don't know. I, I don't know if this is even helpful. I might just ask Judy, what, is this, what does this mean? What does this yeah. accomplish? Because don't that? we have more than that now? Getting back to that 11 Main Street, that's well, deeper I, I don't know why we would feet. regulate that at all. Because yeah. and, and what are you going to do with the rest of it? it, it should, we also say that the entrance to commercial space has to be on the front facade, which I think that makes sense. Yeah. Um, 
so then if but if you can't allow that commercial space to go all the way to the back right then what are you doing with that space <laughs> oh, bless you that's striking or that's what it is i agree it's, it's it's more limiting for no real good reason but All right. All right. So on to I section two. Anything? I section three, the affordable housing part. Do we want to push our affordable housing numbers? What? Uh, well, is it a goal to get more affordable housing in town? Yes, for me it is. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think and that's the that's one of the questions. I, 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 me personally, yes. And you know, we've we've spoken with Shopsy, and you know, we've said we want to support them on this. I think, um, and I, it, Judy did say adding this might complicate it. I. My take is this was part of what we wanted to do. We should do it anyway, yes. but I don't know if that's going to be something that's debated. Well, uh, according to this, if I read it correctly, there is no requirement for affordable units unless there are eight or more. So if someone is coming in and putting in five units, none are affordable. And, and so, Sorry. so the, the question is, do we want to promote the affordable housing component and how aggressive do we want to be here? And if we are aggressive, are we going to keep some developers away? Um, just as um, a, a means of thinking about it and the Bemis property, which could have had four rental units in it. Every um, affordable housing complex that has 25% uh, rental as affordable gets to count all of the units. So the if this were to put in four units and one of them were affordable, towards the SHI, Bill Rick, um, Bill Rick, uh, Southboro would be able to claim four. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so interesting. So, so when um, a uh, big developer comes in and says, I'm going to give uh, you 200 units. Uh -huh. 50 of them are affordable, 25%, but towards your SHI, you get to count 200, which is kind of where um, the push is. In this case, if it's eight or more and we're only at 12.5%, you put in eight units and one is affordable, you only get to count one unit. However, if you were to make it 25% of eight or more, you would be able to count eight if someone did it. The question is, is going to eight too much? And, and so that's the debate that I, I think maybe we should have because if we wanna push affordable housing, those numbers need to change. Yeah, um, agree. And I also think that if it's we... much more likely that we're gonna have somebody come and put in four units than it is that we're gonna have someone put in eight units. Yes. And yeah. And what's what's the goal? And sorry, I, I don't know some of these acronyms and, and concepts, but who benefits from counting all the units about 25% or who gets what? So every uh, municipality uh, in uh, Massachusetts is subject to 40B, which is basically state law, which says you have to have at least 10% of all of the units in the community deeded or deemed affordable. So uh, every community always tries to get up to its 10%. I don't know where South Borough stands, but if you're going in and adding- We need an apartment building. Yeah. Right? <laughs> a friendly 40B would be nice. A uh, uh, friendly 40B with 25% um, you know, rental, that would be awesome. Um, but until that point in time, 
your SHI, the subsidized housing inventory, um, it fluctuates with more single family homes being uh, built, it actually goes down. So when you have the opportunity for apartments, you actually want to promote and get as many affordable units as possible. John, did I, you, you do this as well, kind of for um, Southboro. Did I hit on that pretty well? Yes, you did. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're, we need to get like 18 units a year to meet our goal, Michael. So you want, we as a town want that number high. Yeah. So we um, do want. Because, okay. you know, the 40Bs that they can come in, Mimi could probably explain the 40B better, but builders can come in and do and put it in as a 40B and they can skirt around some of the different bylaws and rules to, to get the projects done. And not make everything affordable. Right. Or something, some, somehow game, game the system, right? So yeah, they supersede um, local zoning and requirements. So if you had a local wetlands bylaw, um, you could actually get around that um, to, you know, uh, put in uh, units where you don't want them. So when you have the opportunity to proactively with a friendly 40B or in um, this kind of zoning language here, push for more affordable units, you want to do it. That's John? It. Yes, sir. Um, we actually need about 60 units or so now to get to our 10% today, roughly 60. And uh, we got a huge boost from Madison Place that had, I can't remember, 100 or something rental units that gave us a major push. And maybe having some requirement here to make a certain number of units rental units would give us uh, an interesting boost in terms of uh, uh, SHI progress. Do the units have to be rental units or they, they can be like no. owner units? Rental, right? rental qualifies for the subsidized housing inventory. Yeah. So, but so it, say we had four units purchasing, it's does it? It's uh, affordable to ownership, ownership does, but it's a one to one. Yeah. So, if yeah. you had a, uh, a four condo ownership building and 25% or one was needed affordable, you only get to count one. Okay. Which is kind of why okay. um, you see a lot of those very large apartment buildings um, coming through. It helps the developer, it helps the municipality. Do all rentals count towards the yes. uh, 40 BCM, even if it's not deemed affordable, but just yes. any type of a rental? It's so if, if you're at the 25%. Yep. So yep. should we change the, do we, on the affordable housing, would it benefit us to change it to at least 25% of the units shall be affordable and or rental? Or half should be rental or some number like that. I, I'm not sure technically what you can do there, but it's an interesting thing to explore. I don't know that. Yeah. Know, for, uh, quite, quite frankly, if we just change that from 12.5% to 25%, right. we've got ourselves covered. Or maybe simply say X percent should be, should qualify for the subsidized housing inventory, either by ownership or uh, rental versus purchase or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. So a developer could decide which they which way they wanted to go to meet so, the requirement. So that you cover ownership and rental. Oh yeah, that's what it said. Twenty five percent of units shall be affordable housing that is eligible for the subsidized housing inventory. Yeah, but that's ownership. So rental, a hundred percent of rental units qualify. Oh yeah. So if you make the requirement based on qualifying for SHI, the developer can decide how they want to do it. And if you said it was 100% qualified, then that would almost force it to be all rental units. It's a little course. crazy that if you do, <laughs> that you can like skirt the system by getting four times more counted towards you. Okay. So would, did, if we change it to uh, eight or more units, at, at least 25% of the units shall be eligible, just leave, get striked up the affordable housing, that uh, shall be affordable housing, just put, uh, 25% of the units shall be eligible for chapter 40B subsidized housing SHA in accordance with chapter B 40 regulations. Could, would that be good enough just to strike the uh, affordable housing part out of it and keep it as, as towards the SHI, Sam, do you think? Um, again, I'm not the technical expert, but I think that's an interesting thing to pursue. I agree. And that's not writing anything else. It's just striking uh, shall be affordable housing. So actually, if we just change it to 25%, I don't think. 
Let's, and, then, and, and, you know, we can, I think, um, you know, I'm sure JOPC is going to have a lot to say about this. I think generally, if we show that we're supporting this mission, then they can, you know, I think Tom probably or someone else on that committee has the technical expertise to make sure that we're saying it correctly. Yeah. Come on here. Plus, it's also going along with the uh, purpose of the grant. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which might yeah. get us more money in the future. Job, Claire. All right, I'll reach out to Dorian to make sure that that's gone out. I haven't seen it go out to the Shopsy committee yet, and I will make sure that it has and uh, bring this up because I, I like changing that 25% um, eligible for the SHI 40B instead of calling it affordable because that way it, it, it can be ownership or, or rental. Uh, that gives me the choice because rentals, obviously, I'd rather have because that all of them go towards it. Yeah. <laughs> Good one, Marika. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I just saw that one. <laughs> yeah. Good one, Marika. John, I will. You, better, I will. you better watch the screen instead of you know. No, I keep reading know. and striking my little thing. I'm reading my paper here, but yeah. My, you know, well, Marika's going to give you a copy of this, so you know, you really don't have to keep your own scorecard. I know. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, I, 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 I like that look. Okay, anything else on the affordable housing? You know, I, I don't know if everybody, um, I was listening in on that Shopsy meeting. Uh, John, you were at it. Um, and the interesting thing, and this is one of the things that has to be cleared up up front. Um, one of the Shopsy members, you know, mentioned, well, if they're going to be putting 30 or 40 units down there, they have to be you know, affordable. I don't know in God's green earth where you could fit 30 or 40 units <laughs> down there. And the point is, is that people need to understand the size of the land that's down there. No. It ain't much. I mean, my, my yard is two and a half acres and that's like, you know, that's one, almost one fifth of what we're talking about down there. It's about a hundred thousand square feet. It's it's about fifteen acres down there, all told. But if you wanna if you want to um, increase your affordable housing in downtown, there's not a lot of space for big developments. How about allowing accessory units? We do buy special permit. Uh, by ZBA, whatever, what is that called? Yeah. Special yep. permit under section E, yeah, an accessory apartment. Can, yeah. Can you Special count permit. Accessory units towards uh, affordability. Uh, I thought, um, I, I wasn't sure if those counted that way. Yeah, you don't think some of them, Rob, but it's a tricky process. So not everyone qualifies, but uh, you got to go through a certification process with DHCD that is not trivial, as I understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on from the one that I will take it, uh, Section J. Anybody have anything on that one? That's it for that. Wow, that's the last. That's the last page, All right? Except for the on that. And then plan review. Anybody have anything on the uh, section one seven four dash ten point one village district plan review? Marika, are you putting in that uh, she has, Judy has to go through and make it consistent so you're not making the yeah. individual, co okay. Yeah. yeah. No, my only comment was that these are again, um, very subjective things. Are these um, 
you know all these uh, points, can a can a project be um, denied because of this, or are these just like kind of design like nice to have things? How binding is this? I don't know. Because that that was the whole you know purpose to have clear objective performance design design standards so people know exactly what what is you know uh, allowed and what is not allowed um, and and projects can't be denied because of subjective um, things and and just ask anybody who's you know tried to do something they'll have a few comments I don't have what you have there, Marika. Yeah, where is that? What's that coming from? This? Yeah, go scroll up. I don't have any of all that A down. All I have for that is I just have D. Yeah, and me too. It's like all that A, B, that A, B, blah, blah, blah. That's yeah, all I don't gone. Like uh, like I'm missing a chunk. Yeah, me too. That is not have? on my draft. What are, look, what are you looking at? My draft goes on all this, the way you have, it, I have the top part, but I don't have from A, scroll down. Yeah, because I- uh, That is all gone, except for right there with the D. Okay, so she strike, got rid of all that uh, and just has this part. We have the D, the red part. That's all we have on that whole part. So the rest of it's gone. Did she strike all of that? Uh, and that's this, why the only thing is, is the red the down the bottom? No, you know what? Because this is the existing uh, village. This is the existing section that I put in here. So basically, Judy just added this uh, this line, this text in red. And then yeah, she if you go out down, A all the rest of it's gone. A through C is gone. Did she delete no, because that? Is that? I put that in. So I don't know what. Do you have the version, I, the red line version that I sent you? No, oh, yeah. what I'm, I'm talking about her, Judy's Vima document does not have any of that A C. No, C. No, because she didn't, she did not include the whole um, section. This is all existing from the current bylaw. Right, because these are the design like requirements, right? And, and yes. she took that okay. out and said that. Change, she didn't make any changes to this. Uh, she didn't take it out. Uh, and then she-, she it out. It's not in there. Right, she, she took it out and she said she took it out. the it's planning gone. board may adopt design guidelines and apply them to major site plan approval applications. Yeah, that yeah. all all the other stuff A through D is gone. Yeah, because no. those were like no, she took it out. It's gone. I'm yeah. looking at the draft right here. It's gone. Yeah, it's no, no, but she, she didn't. She never put that in. That's why I I added the. That's what to, for comparison reasons, right? She just added. Uh, she just put in what she added. Yeah, no, Marika's correct. All same thing. Yeah, Marika's correct. And all she did is everything that she has on her screen is there except subsection D. So Judy only added subsection okay, D. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yes. All right, so this is just what's already there and what will be there. And my question was just that, do we want this in here? Um, I mean, it's, it's good to have design guidelines, but they should be non-binding because we want to keep it as objective as possible. And that's why we want as clear um, performance standards or you know whatever she calls them um as possible right that was i think was we talked cool. about doing design guidelines separately um you yeah. know maybe promulgated by the planning board or, or putting together a group to do it separately yeah. um so that you know there is a standard um yeah. having it outside of the zoning bylaw and i think that's important too because as we've seen the zoning bylaw is something that's pretty static over the course of with you know um, you know style and, and things like that over time so I think it makes sense to have that be a document that's a little bit easier to amend than a than a zoning bylaw yeah so then all that stuff would come out yeah and then after we do this we can figure out who gets to do design guidelines and what those look like which is probably trickier than doing this or as tricky. Um, well, is, is it possible that 
um, it, it, this thing could get held up because if there is not an officially approved design guideline document that this wouldn't get voted through? That's an interesting question. Um, I mean, I, I guess without them, right, it's just subject to... Well, then the somebody said, you know, right? you, you, yeah, so you could put a red and black building down there, you know, with, you know, painted red and black, something really bizarre. Um, well, it still and, has to go through site plan approval, right? But would they have the, I don't know if they would have the authority to deny because of that without a... Well, that's a good question we can ask you. Yeah. Mimi, do you have thoughts on that? On site plan approval? So if, if we take, if we do design guidelines separately from this and take out sort of the design language from um, uh, 174.10.1b, um, if, if instead we say, okay, we're going to pass this bylaw without any design specifications and put a, a, a design guidelines in separately with the idea that that's something that's easier to amend over time, um, it, it, Claire's question was, if we pass the zoning bylaw and don't also at that time have a complete set of design standards, um, is that going to be a problem if somebody comes before you know, somebody puts through a project or submits a project and there aren't design guidelines to abide by, would, you know, they would still have to go through site plan approval, but would the planning board have authority to, to reject over, you know, design issues um, if we don't have design standards in place? Does that make sense? Um, yeah, a site plan. Sorry, I'm tired. We, the planning board can't reject a site plan unless it's incomplete and doesn't have the information that allows the planning board to make a decision. So the use is already decided before it comes before site plan. So there, there is no denial of a site plan. We just try and make sure that, that the project works and mm -hmm. all the engineering and landscaping so and parking and everything are in compliance with the bylaw. Okay, so we would have to have design guidelines come up pretty simultaneously with the zoning bylaw, is that what we're saying? I, I think- and without, um, des without design guidelines- I think it would be difficult. I think people wanna know what you're thinking and what will be allowed. And I, while I'm speaking, if I, I have one concern, and it seems that this bylaw in sense, um, the removal of, all, of the bu buildings downtown, there's nothing that would retain historic buildings and um, have- Wouldn't the a demolition bylaw do that? Hmm? Wouldn't the demolition bylaw do that? Yeah, it'd give you a six month delay. I thought it was two years. I didn't realize it was only six months. Oh, is there anything in the current, but how is that different than the current zoning bylaw? Does that change? Does that make it, you know what I mean? The current mm -hmm. business village? So if you're saying that, you, that you're concerned that the new bylaw would incentivize people to, you know, demolish existing historic buildings, how, how, what's changed that you think that's more likely now than it, or, or would, it, it would be more likely with a new bylaw than versus what's in place right now? Well, the new one's by right. Currently it's a special permit. So you need special permit to remove a building? Well, you need a special permit to do anything in the village business <laughs> district yeah. unless it's under 2000 square feet. But so the only so the only impediment is right now is the discretion of of the planning board members to say no we wouldn't allow that because it's a historic building because there's broad discretion. Right, that it wouldn't meet the the design guidelines of uh, the village business district. Do we know that there's actually in the actual BVD that there are 
historic buildings there? Oh yeah. Yeah, the um the, my flower shop, that's a historic building. That's that's old. Uh I don't remember Wh that. Which one, there. John? I'm sorry, which one? The flower shop built the one that, that the barbershop and the flower shop used to be in and uh, the pharmacy, that building that's a historic building. And then I believe oh. uh Balcones red building that would make an awesome little brew pub right. with the, yeah. the patio up at, that's a historic the, building the historic uh, historic commission has a list of of buildings that are oh okay historic. yeah that was that was so there most of them are one in three is 1875 yeah uh, six in eight newton or 1890 um 21 boston road 1899 29 1900 Four Park Street, 1850. No, but how does it, I, I think I'm still not sure, how does it currently work? I mean, you need a special permit, but do you go to, is there like a historic bylaw that you um, that look at when it, when, it, when it comes up for one of these, these historic buildings? Because right now, Judy Barrett, basically she made a new district, but it's basically the same bylaw, uh, except for up to, what was it, 3,000 square feet, it would be, um, by right, but only for very specific uses. Well, it's smaller lot, lot size, smaller setbacks. It's it's much more generous, and it's by right for most uses. How do you currently protect the historic nature of your of the buildings? Well, if someone came before us with a, a plan to demolish a historic building, first it would have to go, um, before it could be demolished, it would have to go through the uh, demolition delay process. And it might which be two years, I'm not sure. Which would still be the case, right? Which would still be the case, right? Yeah. Except for then, I, I can't imagine that the planning board would approve a special permit that demolished a historic building. So what if somebody wanted to come in and say, like let's say Moro's at the cafe is a historic building. I don't know if it is or if it's not. Um, that, this is purely just a, 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 a question of, so, so let's say Moro's was a historic building and a developer wanted to come in and raise it and put in a building that actually had indoor plumbing that the patrons could use. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and You're so fancy, I'm a snob. I know, right? The port. I could go with the portlet. I won't get that. But I'm just saying. So if they, if if that happened now, under, under the bylaw, as is. So would that be delayed because it hits, it's a historic building? Because sometimes there's a difference between old and historic. Like the old um, police station. That was old. It was not historic. It, I mean, parts of it were, but it was falling apart. There's there's a there's there's definitely a difference between old and historic. So. My question is, what would happen with something like that, where you know uh, updates would be wonderful to have have a, a a nicer, cleaner, better restaurant? Not that it's not that, but you know what I mean. So, how does that work now versus what would have? Well, right. So right now, that wouldn't um, wouldn't trigger the demolition delay because it's a 1946, and the demolition delay. No, but I was saying if it was, I was just it was hypothetical. I was just using that as an example. That's why I said I didn't know if it was. I was just saying something like that. Say it it did meet the criteria to be historic, whatever year it was built to be historic, and you know somebody wanted to come in and put a more updated building in there and and raise most of it or keep some of the facade or whatever. Keep how would that happen? Could it happen under now versus if we change it, what would be different? Does that well, make sense? I know that doesn't make sense. I'm tired and I'm listening to my own question. I don't even know what the heck I'm asking. So I apologize for that. So yeah, we're listening to John. <laughs> it's a long, long week. <laughs> so right now it would have to go before um, the planning board for a special permit um, and the historic commission for a, a demolition permit. So that would not change with historic. It would be the same. Okay, so they'd still have to go before historic. 
Can I, can however, I just intervene? The, can I, I however, just they question. wouldn't go before the planning board. It's separate for the site plans and things like that would still be the same. Right, but the site plan is non-discretionary. When a, when a project goes before the historic commission, say you wanted to demolish an, an existing historic building and you went before the historic commission, you keep talking about a two-year delay, but they the historic commission can say no, right? It, there doesn't have to be a delay. They could say just no, is that correct? Right, they could say it's an old building, not a historic building. Get that. So if, we, if we have a historic commission, isn't, isn't it there? job to to make that call whether the building is worth is worth preserving not the planning board's call under the demolition delay bylaw yes but like mimi just said moros actually wouldn't meet the criteria for the demolition no, bylaw. forget moros i'm saying like any historic building that's downtown if somebody wanted to demolish it to build something new the first step would have to be that they would have to get approval from the historic commission mimi saying that even if the historic Com commission granted it, if there's no, if it's a by right use, you know, um, or, or under the current zoning bylaw, if the historic commission said, that's fine, it's old, it's not historic, go ahead, take it down. Planning board at this point could still step in and say, no, it's historic. Is that, that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, well, usually, you don't go to historic until you're uh, looking for a demolition permit. And that's what triggers going to the uh, historic commission, historical commission. Right. But you usually get your permits first. If you're gonna build a new building, you get your uh, site plan or So you would go to planning first. board so you go through all this. Yeah. So you would go to planning board first, say, I want this. Planning board would say, that's a historic building. So then you would go to historic building to the historic commission. If the historic commission granted you the right to, to demolish the building, then you could go back to planning board. But then on that second round, planning board could again say, no, it's historic. Well, I think that the planning board, if someone came before us who wanted to demolish a, a building that meet, met the criteria of historic, we would confer with the, with the historic commission. So your concern was that if we moved to by right use, historic buildings wouldn't be protected, be, but they would because they would still have to go through the historic commission. Right. But, they, but the historic commission can't protect them. They can just delay. It's I a demolition delay bylaw, not a protection bylaw. Historic commission can't say, no, you can't dem demolish it. They can only say you have to no. wait to demolish it. Yeah. Uh, Julie, the historic commission can say uh, basically delay for nine months and try to figure out a way to preserve it. But if the developer makes good faith efforts to preserve and can't do it, then the building can come down. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So do we want to, I guess, getting back to the the uh, this section of uh, design guidelines. Do we want to have her put all that back in and just add section D or just leave as is and let you and Lisa and Claire and Judy handle that one, Julie? Well, one of the things that um, Marika had done was put together a, you know, and this is once again, just putting a document together to get a document for discussion purposes. She put together something for design guidelines. And I think that, um, I, I guess that's typically, uh, Mimi, a planning board thing. That was a question. And in other words, in a town, who, in a town, who typically does design guidelines? Most towns uh, appoint a, a review board. A design review. They don't okay. really have design guidelines. And so. Okay, so in other words, so let's say that, you know, we really wanted to, because it, it, it doesn't take a genius to figure out how this thing could fall on its face because everybody's gonna go, well, there's no approved design guidelines, so we don't know exactly what could happen. 
So let's say, for example, that um, somebody of, you know, um, so somebody that had the clout to do it said, okay, there's a design guide guideline document that has been put together. Either let's put together a, um, an ad hoc uh, review board or uh, to work with everybody, uh, kind of like what EDC started doing with this. Uh, put together somebody so that we can get the design guideline put together so that it can get voted on, approved by the planning board. So that so you said, well, a, a design review committee would be put together that would kind of be under the purview of the, um, I mean, they wouldn't be reporting to the selectmen, they'd be under the purview of the planning board, no? I think that should be a goal of ours that we have a design review committee that's in part of this process, that there's design guidelines and there's a design review committee, you know, stuff that yeah. they've got to get through. To get it moved along, yeah. To prevent the black and white building, to prevent, you know. Right. The ugly so, things and nobody so, wants. Black and pink, you know. So they whatever. would be part of the permitting process, not just to put together the guidelines. The I, I think standing that's, committee. Yeah, I think we should, or, or, or put together as something needs to come up. Um, I, you know, I don't know if that we're going to have as much work that warrants an entire committee, but I, I think that, you know, in the industry, we have plenty of jobs that go in front of it, and I'm halfway through building the building, and we're still working with it, still working with them. So um, I, I think they're beneficial, and that could elevate us, um, but I think that we have to take a shot at writing them, right, no matter how loose or, and I think we've started some of it. Hey, Marika, get your yeah. dust cloth out. Get that document, dust it off. Yeah, I got it here. I have it right here. It's still warm. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, this... no, because no, my question is so when you have a design, so we have, because, you know, we have this currently in the bylaw. So, if we can create something that is better than this, uh, but then take it out of the bylaw, we could start with that as a design guideline. So how would the process work? We would have a review, bo review board, and uh, maybe it has, has like some architects, some uh, people from the historic, uh, historic commission, planning board, I don't know, you know, on that board, they would meet with the developer beforehand to ensure that they um, adhere to the design guidelines, even though they're not binding in the final uh, permitting process. Is that correct? That makes sense to me. I think so. Or, or at least making, making a step that they have to go through that committee, make that binding. Yeah, because, I mean, if we can just improve on what we have here, which shouldn't be too hard, which I think we already have, um, should we make that part of, of this process? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Because actually that was something that with Adam Costa we discussed. That's why we needed Judy Barrett for the, the actual performance standards, all the specific numbers, which are, you know, very objective and very clear. Uh, and then take all the subje subjective uh, things out of there uh, and put them in design guidelines so they can be um, discussed with the developer beforehand, um, make sure they know right. what we want, what we're looking for. Uh, but they can't be a reason for uh, denial. And that was the reason that all that part uh, was pulled out from one version to another. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Moving on. Is that I'll it? Say, I, don't, I don't know how much more left than me. So. Yeah, I spent, it's with, with just about three hours. I think we just went through everything. Three hours. Just about. Yes. Yeah. Real quick then. So do we want to keep going? I, I think we, we I think we did a, a good job going over. I think we went through this pretty pretty well. Um Marika, maybe you and I tomorrow we can talk and go over, make sure we, we both on the same page on all the changes. And I'm sure you kept much better notes and stuff yeah, than I. I'm taking the day off tomorrow. So are you? <laughs> good for you. What? She's working tonight. Today's not a day on. I'm just curious: is, is Sam, Mimi, Lisa, are you are you all in agreement where we are and where we're going, and are you supporting this? 
and how will you support it at our next meeting? So I guess I'll, I'll jump in first. Um, I think from my perspective, Chris, I, again, I, I'm going to be curious to see. I think you guys have made great headway, but I'm going to be curious to see what planning board says as well. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all going to have to come together and reach some form of consensus. So this isn't going to work. So, I mean, we're fortunate that I think Mimi was on tonight. Mimi heard some of what you're looking to do. Um, you know, now it's up to planning board to take their shot and, and they may differ from you, you know, just as some members of the board. But I think um, this is a great starting point for the conversation on the 10th that everybody knows where each other committee is coming in at. So I think it gives us a, a, a great opportunity to be able to find a better common ground in doing it this way. So if, if you're asking specifically, Chris, if I support what you've done tonight, um, I'm gonna reserve that. I mean, I, I think you've made great headway. I think you've covered some of the things I had on my list of questions and comments I had as well. So from that respect, yes. But I think in, in putting together a package that's gonna pass town meeting, um, I, I think I'll, I'll wait to the 10th to say that I support, you know, one way or the other. I mean, obviously I'm gonna support the best document that can pass yeah. town meeting. Lisa, I cannot thank you and Sam enough for being here and with us. And Mimi, your, your uh, background knowledge is, is uh, terrific. And, uh, but the reality is we keep kicking the can around and we, we, we pick little things around and, oh, let's change this. And then we go to a board meeting and everything goes a different direction. And the, I see one of the reasons we're meeting here, here we have uh, Sam who's been in zoning most of his life here in town. He hasn't said much. We, um, uh, we have some wonderful high value comments that have come in, but my feeling is, is we've got to go in as a team and not say, okay, how can we pick this apart? And where do we go from here? And there's no consensus. I mean, well, Mimi, I, think I think you've got the most smarts on the planning board in terms of the of what we're trying to accomplish. Are we 80% of the way to where we need to be? And, and Chris, I think, you know, I, I, I think we're, we're heading toward that point. I mean, you know, we've got a document in front of us that, you know, everybody and all the shareholders are commenting on. I mean, that that is a great stride forward in, in potentially getting something done for town meeting. So um, I view the 10th as, as a very opportune meeting for all of us to get on the same page to some level, you know, to be able to move this forward. But I, I, I feel that if we just go in and present and we're waiting for the planning board to start on us, uh, instead of the planning board represented by Mimi and yourself as the guide on this whole project, that you can present a summary of this activity and that we're going to fine tune this and we're going to come with something that's going to take us forward as a community of one. That's the plan. That's the plan. I agree. Yeah. And I, first of all, I'm pushing because we have gone down this trail and spent $100,000 and went nowhere and the town is looking at us to come up with a first class product. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this move, uh, move by a thousand cuts sometimes I feel um, is very distracting. And I just feel that we should be walking into this next meeting with you, Sam, Mimi saying, we have been through this and we think this is a great working document. How do we fine tune it? Because we're going forward. Hey, Chris, well, we're a couple of meetings from that, Chris. Yeah. Chris, um, I, I, I guess I'm with Mimi. I think, or Lisa, I think your pessimism is premature. Mm -hmm. As yeah. one who went through the ZAC process, we have made great progress uh, relative to the speed with which ZAC moved. And I think we got, as Lisa said, the, the key stakeholders uh, engaged in the process. And I think we're headed toward uh, what could be a relatively short term and successful process here, as long as we keep talking and keep people engaged. But I think there are a lot of details that we need to work through. I think people are doing that in a constructive way. And uh, I'm optimistic that we're going to get to the finish line with this in a reasonable period of time. But uh, I don't think we're at the point where everybody needs to stand up and say, you know, I vote for this draft or I vote for that draft kind of thing. But I think we're, we're making great progress. And I'm not nearly so pessimistic about the possibility of death by a thousand cuts at this point. But we'll see. Sam, 
Sam, I just want to say that's the first time we've heard this, and I thank you. We thank you. That's that's a strong comment of, of where we're going and what we're doing, and that kind of articulated positive framework is what we're looking for as we go forward to the next stage. Um, the yeoman's work by this committee, we've been doing this for over two years now. And we're at, <clears throat> we're, we're at the point that your comment sets a stage for the community, for the town and Lisa, that we're, we're moving forward and we've made significant progress and we're gonna fine tune this. So I thank you for your confidence and um, your support. It means a great deal along with Lisa and Nimitz. Yeah, and, and, and Chris, Lisa and, and I have been working together on this and she's been very, very supportive. And I, I believe we have we have the support of, of a lot of people. You know, I think that the general tenor is that everyone is looking for a way to move this forward. And this is our first dive into, you know, this kind of complex document. And we had a lot of questions and stuff's gonna come up, but I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're gonna be able to to agreement and move it forward without without too much delay. All right. Um, any more comments on that document? Just because I know Michael's got to go. We need to. I got to go too. But and Claire had her hands up that she wanted to say something, so I told her she could. Yeah. Thanks. Um, just real quick, um, I took a look. Judy wants these comments um, next Friday, and that's when. Um, Mark Purple wants them, and I assume he's going to send them right away to Judy so that she will have these comments for the November 10th meeting. My question is, um, I just looked at, for example, the planning board agenda for Monday night. Um, Mimi, do you know if, if the planning board is going to have a separate meeting to discuss, like, like we went through tonight at the EDC meeting. Do you know if the planning board plans on having um, a similar meeting? Um, I don't know. We just received um, this document at the end of last week along with everyone else. So we haven't met since it's been distributed. So um, I guess that will be discussed tomorrow. Do you mean to go through it line by line? Well, however, the, the planning board is going to give comments because you guys are really the key players. And um, I, I and I know you do have it on the agenda. I just uh, took a look at it, but there's also a whole lot of other things on there. So realistically at your Monday night meeting, November 2nd, there, uh, the planning board isn't gonna have a chance to go through it like this. So my, So you can understand why I'm bringing up this question. I understand it's a question for Don to bring up to you guys, but, um, Otherwise, I, I just, it's a, a piece of this that is a big part of the whole collection of the comments um, that won't get into, um, it won't get in for November 6th. Well, I, I've already started filling out my comment sheet, so. Oh, okay. Oh, my good. comments will go in and I'll well, discuss hey, I think I think they pretty much just need your comments because you've been really following this the closest of anybody. And if I can also add, uh, Claire, it's Lisa, that um, when I had, um, when we had spoken to to planning board prior, we let Don know of the urgency and that's why they were asked to put it on the agenda. Oh, okay. Um, was for I, comments. I, I bring and, that up because um, I, the agenda for uh, Monday night is packed. So yeah, I, you I know. know it's not gonna be a three hour discussion like this was. No. Yeah. And you know, even the board of selectmen, honestly, Claire, we we talked, we went through. Well, we talked about parts of it, and all of us seem to have some very similar comments initially. So we're actually forwarding our comments um, to be compiled together, kind of similar to what you're doing tonight. Um, sure. Because yeah. again, our, our comments seem to be very similar in nature, and and you covered, I, I think, a good majority of them tonight as well of, of comments that we had. So that's it for me. Sorry. Thank you. So Lisa, you, you think the board of selectmen comments lined up at least in, in significant part with ours? Well, I, I think part of them that were brought up, I know Sam brought up a few, um, as we were kind of discussing things, it was lots of head nodding and everything. So um, I would imagine, Julie, I mean, I, I would say the, 
a good portion of my comments were addressed tonight. I mean, I can speak for me saying a good portion of mine were addressed tonight. So um, it's nice to hear that we're uh, all we're on the same page ish. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and I think so. I mean, I can't speak for any other board or no, of course not. like, like I said, Sam had brought up a few comments and I laughed and, and had said to him at the meeting that, you know, he, he took a couple things off my thunder because we were on the same page on it. So um, I view that as positive. Great, good to hear. All right, I have to run, sorry. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so I, 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 Mariah just said, maybe we can table the minutes till the next meeting to vote on those. Because yeah. if we want to do that for next week, that's fine. Or do you guys want to just do a quick vote on them? I'll leave that up to you. I really gotta run. Okay, sorry. so, all right. Thank you everybody for being here for three hours tonight. Um, you just motion to adjourn. Yeah. yeah. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. All right. We're gonna do a roll call. Um, Michael. Yes. Julie. Yep. Uh, Chris, uh, Rob. Yep. Chris. Chris, you're muted, but I'm assuming you want to adjourn. <laughs> yes. All right, Suzanne. <laughs> yes. Myself, John Wood. Yes, and that's all of us. Thanks, Emerson, everybody. everybody. Thank Sam, you, everybody, so much. Mimi, uh, I think Lisa, we got a lot accomplished. Thank you. Lisa, thank you. Sam, Mimi, thank you. Mimi, thank you for teaching me the difference between a basement and a cellar. I'll remember <laughs> that forever. That is my tidbit of information for the day. So. Bye, Anytime, thank John. <laughs> so, that, that's the one I'll remember forever. So thank you. <laughs> Have John, a great night. We'll connect tomorrow. Yeah, and then uh, so uh, yeah. real quick, you said the tents yeah. delivered today. 